it's Christmas time. This episode, it's time to get jingly. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. This is the Every FNFF Podcast. I am Curtis. I am Carl. I am Alex. And this week, uh, Carl is coming to us as our boots on the ground in Icicle <laughs> Inn. <laughs> so a bit of a mix up there. I'm actually coming to you all live from hell. Um, <laughs> I told you all once that I would see you there, but uh, it seems <laughs> like I'm the everyone? only one here. So um, yeah, kind of keep, rude of you guys. <laughs> you got to keep our seat warm for us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Well, uh so what did we do last time? Oh, yeah, nothing important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Where the hell we... Do? Yeah, what did we do? We left... Uh... Nothing pivotal happened last <laughs> episode at all. We got another enemy skill, Materia. That was pretty cool. Yeah, we uh we did our first minus one character <laughs> for the party. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really the first. It was kind of getting bloated. Was it not the be... first? <laughs> I mean, Kate Sith was minus for a while, and then no. he was minus for a while. He's, this well, one's like a, a permanent minus, though. Yeah, he, he's spiritually minus. <laughs> 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 It, to me, he never joined the party to begin with. <laughs> yeah. So, he was canceled. Um, I don't know. It was kind of getting crowded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, do we want to have any um, any special updates or announcements <laughs> at the top of the episode? Yeah, Alex, how's, uh, how's Sid Final Fantasy, the adorable kitten that you saved from the 676 on-ramp doing? Uh, he's doing great. Like like I said last episode, uh, someone was coming over to pick him up, and they did. Um, they, renamed him, they renamed him Skookle. Oh, uh-huh. Skookle's a really good name for him. All right, hit uh, that, hit uh, that victory music. Yeah, oh, we did yeah, it, baby. So he's doing great. He's hanging out with succulents and shit. Hanging out with succulents. We can all, <laughs> you can, <laughs> we, we can all, all be stand so to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> hanging with Sid and succulents and shit. <laughs> Sid, Sid. <laughs> our, cool. our reoccurring, uh, our reoccurring segment, Sid and succulents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So much like last week, uh, one of our party has been, you know, has moved on uh, to a better place, though. And Sid Final Fantasy yeah. is, you know, living in his new forever home, which is S- awesome. Um, Sid could actually stop Sephiroth as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, uh, anything else interesting happened this week, Alex? Yeah, um, well, three days later, I found another fucking cat on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, after the other cat, uh, <laughs> after Sid left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one is, uh, I found, like, in the highway, um, this is a little more tragic, but, uh, uh, there's a little girl, uh, ginger cat, like, right in the middle of Center City, Philadelphia, like, there's, I actually had those, like, like, there's nowhere for me to pull over or stop, like, it was kind of like, I had to basically block one lane of the highway to grab her. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. We are currently doing a little crowdfunding to get her her legs back get her, <laughs> get her legs back but uh so <laughs> we, we have to we have to fix the moogle to her kate sith <laughs> but uh no yeah but on that point like yeah so we brought her home and like immediately noticed that she had a limp i took her to the um vet and you two guys were super kind to help pay for like x-rays and stuff um yeah but um yeah we found out that she had a fracture in her tibia femur and uh i think something around the hip which Ooh. we have to be dealt with so she can't walk on her own right now Oof. yeah but um we are currently probably as you're listening to this doing a uh, gofundme if you'd like to chip in because the uh, she's getting surgery tonight or i should say tomorrow morning actually by the time you're hearing this it's already happened but we're <laughs> time yeah. is weird we, we had to spend a lot of money that we just don't have so if you actually want to like chip in a gofundme i'll definitely have a link to that in the description it'll be great um but i'll I would like to also give a shout out to all the people who kind of gave me a little like early bird donations. Yeah, helped with this because God, like we could not have gotten her uh, attention so soon if it weren't for these people. The real avalanche. The real avalanche. <laughs> Cat so sweet. So Cat avalanche. Wanna, let's give a shout out to James T, aka Drivon, uh, Sarah. I don't know you, but your handles Ninja Spaz. You seem really nice. You have also Orange Cat, uh, Melissa, and Ian from uh, Maine, who I've worked at uh starbucks with uh page shireen hannah uh justin of fucking night of the round fuck yeah fucking thank you Hell justin. Yeah. former guest of the show yeah former enemy of the show but now <laughs> friend of the show <laughs> for now <laughs> <laughs> um gabrielle uh riley one of my best friends uh marjorie chiptography oh she chipped oh. in 
Oh yeah, this is great. Uh, Andrew Basley Adams. Oh yeah, hell yeah, oh, hell yeah. Uh, my friend Lori, Chris Storm Blooper, and her John. Fuck yeah, great. he's got a real. He like he takes care of animals too. That's yeah, like his he thing. does. Uh, Ariel from fucking Countdown. Fuck yeah, she's got hell a great yeah. cat. Ariel's great. Also, she has a band called Countdown from Ten. Go listen to them. They're fucking sick Philadelphia math rock. They are Hell great. Yeah. Dirty, dirty math rock. Hell yeah. <laughs> it is the thick. only kind. It's so good. Uh, Doug, my boss. <laughs> Fuck uh, yeah, Doug. Hell yeah, uh, Doug. We got Ben from uh, Sid Root. He's uh, oh, okay. He's, you were like Ben. I was like the Simpsons bear. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gentle, gentle Ben. ben. <laughs> he does. He, I mean, we could call him Gentle Ben. He works for a rescue. Oh, okay. hell yeah. Um, Izzy, Jenks. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. They rule. Um, they were doing hip hop. They were doing, what, was, what are they working on recently? I was they, they like rocks. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they're a geologist, yeah. They're, uh, Izzy uh, is the person who like convinced me to give like vegetarianism a try and like care about these kind of things. So a special big shout out to them. Yeah. Hell shout, yeah. Uh, I also like a shout out to Kevin, uh, Charlotte, and Caitlin. All y'all, y'all rule. All y'all, hell yeah, rule. y'all fucking rule. The real avalanche. Between all of I basically yeah. raised um, almost eight hundred bucks. That's was, amazing. <laughs> which was a big. It was super hard because like, uh, we did not have enough credit, but we were able to get her the surgery she needs. But we are currently doing GoFundMe. But again, yeah, there'll be a bit to go as far as actually being able to pay all of it off and everything. But. Yeah, absolutely. Giant thank you for able because like like you said, you wouldn't have been able to get the cat. That uh, the help is immediate as we've been able to. Yeah, like if it was donation. something else, like oh, it's hold off. Like no, this is she can't walk. I don't want this like end up fusing because she's a kitten. She's growing fast. We need to like make yeah. sure her bones are aligned. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. I have to act fast. Act fast. Well, hell yeah! I'm gonna, I'm gonna clap away from the microphone. Hell yeah! Fuck yeah! <laughs> and now we can test Woo! the latency between our cameras as well as we're clapping <laughs> yeah. and all looking at each other. <laughs> well, fuck yeah! That's awesome. That is a that is a good heartwarming tale to start on. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Any sponsors who'd like to kick in? To help? <laughs> we can name this kitten for, Casper for Mattress. You can name, we will happily. <laughs> this is. We will name this cat Casper Mattress. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> I've been calling her like Lucy Goose or Sammy Pellegrino. I was uh, Sammy Pellegrino. <laughs> Sammy Coors Light uh, uh, Pellegrino. <laughs> Coors Light is anti-union. I'm pretty sure. Just all right. No, yeah, well, so. Canceled. <laughs> Cancel. You're canceled, Coors. <laughs> you ready to cool. talk about the icicle in? I think so, yeah. Uh, I guess between all this, I kind of rushed through the sequence and kind of... This is only going to be a review for me. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not a huge amount that happens this week. Like, there, there is one big portion of it that there's a lot to talk about. Yo. But I feel like the rest of it is just kind of fun, like, gameplay stuff. There so. is one line in this that I think answers a question we've had for a long time but the thing yeah. is i don't know if i want to answer it when we get to the line i guess we'll talk about it it'll be fine yeah i mean we can we can say like oh and we'll talk about this more in a future episode yeah right 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 uh because like there is gonna be like a reveal coming up mm -hmm. on the next episode that i think you could like if you put all the puzzle pieces together you could be like oh wait a minute you know and go on from there but i don't want to like if we want to wait till the next episode to reveal it, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, well. Anyway, yo, we're in a big snowy area, boys. Hell yeah. Boys, on it's cold, boys. It's Nobody's cold. got jackets on, boys. My toesies are getting <laughs> real, real. I think <laughs> Vincent has a cape and he has long sleeves. I don't. Uh, I guess Sid's got a jacket and in some of the CG art, he has a scarf. Yeah. So those two survive. <laughs> but like everybody else, else, what are you Clark's doing? not wearing any sleeves. No. Guns out. Yuffie's wearing Guns. like no like oh like, my god Yuffie's no doomed. sleeves shorts like yeah <laughs> Yuffie is doomed according to Alex last episode Barrett doesn't have shoes on so <laughs> 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 um yeah but did you want to talk about anything before we get to the town because there's really not much aside from just yeah so we just snowy overworld <laughs> we just left the city of the ancients right which one thing I wanted to ask as yeah. kind of a follow up to the last episode. Um, we had to find the lunar harp to go through the sleepy forest yeah. to find the city of the ancients, right? Yes. Yeah. Theoretically, could the Iceland people could just go south and go straight? I to the wonder. City? Yeah, could they just go the other direction and get but to it? They're like, oh yeah, we've we we spend our vacations there all the time. 
I mean, yeah, on, on one hand, they would have to climb down all those, uh, like the, the cliff sides spelunking. that we climbed up and everything. Yo, people but, pay tons of the butt to go spelunking. Well, I was going to say, it's yeah, true. they do that. And also, like, a lot of the people here are like snowboarders and thrill seekers anyway. So it would be like right up their alley to do it. But um, it could be that the sleeping forest confusion shit could just work in both directions you know what i mean yeah that's what i was kind of thinking too like maybe it's not the same screen that we saw Arathon the first time maybe it's like a different screen but there's a lot of kind of similar not as like insane but there's a lot of confusing geography in this area as well that we'll, yeah. we'll get into in a little bit yeah to anyone with that Maybe if we didn't have the lunar harp when we approached it from the north, it'd be like the sleepy Spurlunky cave. It, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, yeah. The sleepy exactly. cave. You, you go all the way down the cliff, and then you're somehow at the top of it. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Which would be like some real disturbing <laughs> shit. Uh, uh, Ooh, but yeah, uh, so descent. after we walk up a little bit of a... We kind of go around a mountain, right? Um, You'll there's be some, <laughs> coming going around, around the mountain. <laughs> um, there's some chocobo tracks. No, you know, nothing, yeah. nothing huge. Which... Yeah, we haven't really talked about in a while. They're all over the world map. Yeah, you know. Well, there, I mean, there's not, and the thing is, like, they're not. They're, they're there's not a couple of places, yeah, and, and this one in particular. Like later, we'll be coming back to this spot for chocobos if we want to, uh, yeah. like, 100 percent the game, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Are they like yeah, really absolutely. Do they have like extra plumage? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> the different, the, well, that's the thing is like that ton ton. Well, the different ones that you get from different areas will have different sub stats when it comes to the gold saucer mini games. Okay. So this when is we get important. To there, we'll yeah, this is important for when you're feeling very cold and you have to cut one open and crawl inside it to stay warm <laughs> for the night. And I thought they smelled bad. <sighs> On the <laughs> outside, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think chocobo smell like? <laughs> Leave us a five star oh, rating and tell us what smell like <laughs> on the All inside right. and the outside. Icicle in. So there's one town that we can get to, uh, and it's kind of nestled in between two mountains. City of the Ancients. City of the Ancients. <laughs> no, it's Icicle Inn, uh, which is not just an inn. It's like a tiny little town. It's like a lodge. Yeah, it's a, it's lodge. a nice little. It's like a little. I feel like a vacation resort sort of thing. Like yeah, yeah. It's kind of got that vibe to it. It's very. So the Cetras came skiing here. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the thing is, like, on, on our side, so it, it's kind of blocking us from progressing toward the north or toward where Sephiroth has been. Um, so we have to go through the town, but on, you know, we enter one side that's kind of normal, and the other side is just a giant slope, right? It just, like, slopes yeah. down, like like you would have to ski or snowboard down it, like, yeah. to our next area. Um, <laughs> which never will never happen. It will never happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, I kind of like walked around town, right, and just kind of talked to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I saved the the house with the plot for last. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured we'll just kind of like talk about some of the houses. Is that cool? Sure, that sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I went right into the the house right in center of town, mm -hmm. where there's just like I'm assuming it's a woman there. I can't really tell their gender but they say my boy got hurt right about the time that we moved here i never should have got him that snowboard uh -huh. and the, and there's a kid in the back room it's like his room it's like a kid's room and he has a snowboard on his bed and he's like crying and he's like oh you know whimper weep like, yeah whimper weep <laughs> he, like, it's, also, on snowboard. It, it's a kick-ass snowboard too <laughs> yeah like it's it very, very colorful yeah, it has like like rainbow colors, but they're like flames. smeared. Yeah, like flames. Yeah. yeah, and the front the front portion of it is like a sunburst, like you would see on like an S, uh, not an SGA, uh, a Les Paul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the tobacco burst finish or whatever they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a recycled texture from like enemy or something because it does look like something that could have been stretched and re reflected. It could be. From, like, yeah, that's a good text. point. That's there, there, this happens a lot in Nintendo well. games where they like just a reflection is or, or like some like little tiny detail you would never use. It's just a recycled like decal stretched and smeared to conserve space. And there's a kid yeah. in there also, not on the snowboard, yeah. just in front of the snowboard. Yeah, um, hanging out by the bed. Aw. So after this, I went to the house on the far right. <laughs> and uh, uh. I love this house because there's a lot of like interesting characters in it. And uh, so as soon as you walk in, there's like a map on the wall, right? Uh -huh. And I love the map because you can talk to it and it'll say, like, look at the map or take the map. So you can just, like, rip this map off of these people's walls if you want to, like, without even asking them first. Which there's a guy standing outside of the house where if you talk to him, he'll go, yeah, by all means, go ahead and take my map. Yeah, yeah. The same thing happened to me where I was like, I got yeah. the option to take it. And I was like, I don't know if I want to. I was like, I know that it's a video game. So, you know, you're supposed to like, I had no yeah. problem going into the other room where there's two items and taking those. But I was like, oh, yeah. I feel kind of weird taking <laughs> Which, um. 
What, what are those? Those are hero drink and vaccine? Yes, there is oh, the, yeah. uh, yep, the hero's drink and the vaccine, correct. What is the hero's drink? Oh, wait, I have it right here. Raises ability once during battle. Yeah, so I think uh, I think it raises your ability. Um, I might have read this wrong, or I might be misremembering, but I think it raises your ability by like thirty percent, kind of across the mm. board. Oh, um, okay. And I think you can use it up to four times. But uh, I think the no- more notable thing about it is this is a recurring item in the Final Fantasy series, right, which like right. I mean, so are like elixirs and pretty much everything. But I feel like this particular one has such a kind of unique name compared to like just potion or something that every game has where it's you know in some games it's called hero and some it's called you know like this one is called hero drink i feel like whenever it pops up in a final fantasy game it's always like an item that there might be like two or three of the entire game and they're always like yeah really good oh oh, speaking of which did so you talk to the guy before you took the map down yeah if you take the map down and then talk to the guy he says Oh hey, I have a map. If you if you want to go take it, wait a minute. You already took it. What a jerk! <laughs> it's like it's mad oh, at you really? for taking it. Oh really? Okay, it. that's awesome. He's like, that's I can't so believe good. you. Um, you would just come into my house and take it. He still lets you have it because he still suggests that you take it anyway. But he's like, oh, what a jerk! <laughs> I can't believe you just yeah. took the fucking I've, map. I've totally done that um, with parents before. Where I'll just do something or eat something or something before, and then ask permission. Yeah. For afterwards, <laughs> yep. like, hey, is it okay if I do this thing? Like, yeah. <laughs> just knowing I had already done it. Yeah. And just like yeah. gambling on the fact that they'll say yes. Right, right, right. <laughs> better, better to ask for uh, uh, forgiveness for, than permission. Forgiveness than permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which isn't the uh, case for everything. That's not really a good philosophy. No, all, no, actually. no. But um, yeah, yeah he, he'll just say, like, mm-hmm. it's nearly impossible to reach the northern limits without a map. Uh, if you're thinking about going to the northern limits, you better take that map on the wall. And that's kind of just right. where he leaves it. And then I went inside. Yeah. You opt to take the map, and it says received key item glacier map. Yeah. And that's pretty accurate, too. Like, where we're headed is genuinely the northernmost point on the map. Yeah. yeah it's a cool looking map, though, way I'm speaking of. Um, yeah. I actually got really confused about what was what because you can't really read it but there yeah. are like, but there are yeah. like I, there are a lot of uh, visual cues about what's what which we'll get to later I guess yeah. what, what that means uh, yeah, speaking but of the compliments oh, to the uh, cartographer yeah <laughs> someone had a beautiful yes. map it's beautiful <clears throat> there's a uh, there's an old lady on a uh, rocking chair in front of the fireplace in this house uh-huh. and her text is I just get so comfortable and then and like which is like a cute way to start a thing and then her next line is my husband left 20 years ago <laughs> and hasn't come back. And oh I was like, God. whoa, you really threw me for a fucking curveball there, lady. And she says, he should at least be at the foot of Gaia's cliff. It's marked with a check on that map. And like, mm-hmm. <laughs> her husband left 20 years ago and is hanging at the bottom of this fucking cliff. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why like, I would have well written somebody off well before that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm just like, no, we're still together. It's fine. Like, we haven't. <laughs> like, it's cool. I don't know. Maybe she goes to visit him. I, I guess that's possible. Cause I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't, yeah, anyway, it's wild. <laughs> um, so, let's see here. You good with this house? I'm ready to move on. Yeah, uh, I think outside of it, there's um, little kids who are building a snowman, and they say things like, oh, it's almost finished, and oh, next time we're going to make it even bigger, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, pretty cute. Um, we go into the inn. And we can find um, various people who have come for snowboarding uh-huh. and like skiing and all this stuff. Uh, and uh, there's some probably familiar faces, P- potentially some guys from Costa del Sol. Yeah, there's some of the Costa del Sol people are here. The bros. Yeah, I and like it. Notably, they're wearing the exact same thing that they wore in they Costa are. del Sol, which is just like <laughs> yeah, a speedo. They have like, yeah, they have the speedo and like the trunks. Yeah, it's hilarious. Hey, man, after hitting the uh, slopes, you get real sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, well, they didn't even hit the slopes because they kind of, they, they're like, oh, man, we came all this way and we can't even snowboard. Yeah, because uh, cause one of them says the, the hill is off limits, that it's blocked right now and nobody's allowed to... Uh, to snowboard um, yeah the slopes are closed mm. yeah so uh <laughs> it's cool if you go into like a door in this end there's like a little side door you, oh, can, yeah. you can go into like the basement of it and there's like a little like speak easy bar down there it's, it's pretty cool i kind of like it i like it, has, it a like, lot yeah it looks like a cool place to to go a, a yeah it has a bunch of posters and shit and like tchotchkes all over the wall you know it, it, yeah, it it's looks like nice. it's got like a lamp that's like a dragon face and the, the light is emanating from its like, yeah wall. yeah it's got a, it's, it's got a real cool. style to it i really like it yeah. Uh, a weird thing that happened was when I walked down there, um, someone said, what's with you? You make me sick. But I'm not sure who said it, like a dialogue box. Me neither. Up. And then like I, th- I thought there would be more to that with like some of the dialogue down here, but I don't think there is. Right, right. So what I guessed 
when that happens, when that text pops up, like, you make me sick. I, there's a couple people talking to themselves, and one's like, hey, I'm going to go, uh, I'm just going to go past this snowboard limit and just go as far north as I can. And one guy's like, yo, you're going to die. If, if you try to go out there, you're going to fucking die. And they're yelling yeah. at each other. And I thought that maybe they were saying, like, oh, you're making, you make me sick saying that you're going to go out there because you're going to die if you do that. Yeah, that makes so, sense. That, that's, that's how I took it anyway. Yeah. Um, they they mentioned the man who uh, left 20 years ago to go to uh, the cliff face. His name's Mr. Holtzhoff. Yeah. Uh, and they say that uh, he he probably also has a map, <laughs> just in case. And that there's a huge crater up there that if yeah. you go all the way, you'll find this enormous crater. And something fell from the sky a long time ago. Or they say mm. it must have because they're just like guessing. They're like, oh, something must have fallen from the sky a long, long time ago and created yeah. this big crater. I yeah. wonder what it could be. What could it have been? Uh, there's also some pretty interesting dialogue with, uh, like the the table that's like the furthest left that you can get to, um, like yeah. right by the furnace down there, and uh, the it's just uh, two people talking. And they say, "Do you know what a cetra is?" And um, then the other guy says, "What were the cetra? Oh yeah, they were the same as the ancients, right? Yeah, a cetra lived in this town a long time ago. Her name was Ifalna." And she knew about a lot of things. And then the is other that... guy says, what do you mean? And he says, I heard she was abducted by the Shinra and was taken somewhere. Is that and the then... first time we've heard Ifalna? I think it is, right? It is not, mm. no. We've heard it in the oh, flashback, no. I think, or, or at least Eris's flashback, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Did we get her name? Okay, so we already know who that is. Yeah, we, we've heard her name before. I think it might have even been Hojo saying it. Oh, yeah. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, which, which would make sense. Um, and then uh, they kind of finish it off and say, Shinra and the Ancients, I smell something fishy. So, so we're cool to say that uh, Ifalna is Eris' mother's real name. Yeah, her real mother's name. Her real mother, yeah. Yeah, not her adopted mother. Uh, Ifalna's the one who uh, had Aerith when Aerith's adoptive mother found her, and then uh, Ifalna died right there, like in the flashback of um, Aerith's mother telling you. Right, yeah. So this is where she's actually from. Yep. Uh, there's also a closed bathroom door uh-huh. that you can go try to talk to, and if you, you just open the door... And the person inside goes, what are you looking at? Uh-huh. <laughs> and then what if you do it again. What are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. And then if you do it again, they say, you're a real freakazoid, aren't you? Oh, I, <laughs> I only did it once. Freakazoid, freakazoid. freakazoid. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Apparently you can come back later and there's a woman in the bathroom and she screams I've, and yeah, punches I, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, there's also an X potion upstairs in the end, if you go all the way to the top where the yep. beds are. Nice. Yeah. Um, any, uh, I'm good to move on from the end. Yeah, I think I think I am too. Rolling, Hell yeah. rolling. We're, just, we're, we're rolling, rolling. We're, 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 we're rolling. We're blowing. Well, you know, this. I was thinking about it, and like the thing is that like there's not that many parts to this section, but the parts that there are, like the interesting parts, are worth so much discussion. So I was like, oh, right. let's just yep. fucking blow through <laughs> the parts that are. I'm starting aren't to remember. Important. I'm starting to remember uh, why this felt very short, or maybe why yeah. I stopped, started. I accidentally played it a little too much. <laughs> oh, fair <Yeah>. enough. <laughs> it's all good. Um... I like if you go into so there's the there's one more house I think is it the shop? Uh, oh there's, yeah, there, there's yeah. also the shop uh, where it's yeah. Because just... I walked into the shop and like there's an old man sleeping in a rocking chair, uh-huh. and, and if you try to talk to him, his like granddaughter's like, "Oh hey, wake up, we have a customer," and he goes, "Smack, oomph, oh welcome, glad you came," <laughs> and, he sells, <laughs> and he sells pretty good weapons too. Yeah, so really like I actually bought a couple of them. Nice. Yeah, yeah I think like the only one mm. that might not be like as good as what you already have is like uh uh nanaki's weapon because like the one that you got in cosmo canyon from like finishing his backstory is i think a lot better but uh fair enough but all of them yeah they have good materia slots they uh are uh, pretty much an improvement across the board yeah i bought cloud's weapon i think and i think that's the first one i've equipped with him since the yoshiyuki which Uh only had like two materia slots so i was able to put a lot more on him this time oh yeah the Um, the organics it's called is that what it is yeah yeah Yeah. you're right yeah Yeah. and it's it's a it's really kick-ass looking too oh dude it's fucking sick it has like metal it's like a two-tiered blade it's hard to describe but like if you can imagine like describe uh i have the perfect way to describe it it's the bc rich of buster swords (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna i was like i wonder if he's gonna say it looks like the flag of nepal (laughs) because i think it looks like that that's the coolest flag (laughs) by the way yeah yeah. (laughs) official stance of the pod nepal has the coolest flag (laughs) you can pitch it takes it only takes up half as much space oh yeah um. Okay, so the question here is, what did y'all do next? Because 
there are two story-based things that you could do from here, and I think I probably did them out of order. <laughs> I tried going north. I tried to go north, too. What did you do, Carl? Uh, so hmm. I did this actually as one of the first uh, things. Um, I went to the other place than hmm. you guys where there's a there's a house where there's a lot of dialogue and a All lot right. of important stuff. So you guys, if you want to take it away with Let, the north stuff. I, th- I think we should do the, the dialogue house first. Okay. I think so. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let me scroll to it. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, so we get to um, yeah. we get to a house that's very like scientificy looking. Yeah, it's um, very dark. If that's too. even a word. Yeah, yeah. There's like um, there's like a cot uh there or no, I guess that's actually a table. I thought it was a cot, but yeah, yeah. there's a lot of like doodads and gizmos and giant like CRT looking. <laughs> I guess they kind of look more like pinball machines, but like it, just it kind of reminds me of like a like a research lab that would be out like you know like in a in a snowy far away town you know what i mean they don't yeah. have like all the um bells the and whistles amenities. yeah the bells and whistles and the amenities that like a uh like a, a a metropolitan research area might have uh so there are like these devices there's like you said these crts and these um these various scientific instruments but it does look like it's a little like shack at the same time yeah yeah, it's not much. There's like a few, uh, yeah, carts, CRTs, um, consoles. Uh, but you, yeah, you come they in. They got a you, rug. It really ties the room together. What was the first thing y'all did when you came in here? Uh, <laughs> opened the, the sunroof? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> same oh, thing. Wait, what? It, it, the first console on the, uh, starting left. from the left, yeah. yeah, like it just goes, and there's like the window just open. There's a little like a window that opens kind of like an iris. That's yeah, cool yeah. as shit. I didn't even do that. <laughs> like, well, it doesn't even like, let that much sunlight in, though. It just kind of, like, opens a little bit and just illuminates the room barely, like the center of the room. And so it, it's still kind of dark and dingy in there. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. Some uh, some real mood lighting, basically. Mood lighting. Ooh, set in the mood. Indeed, set in the mood for uh, for these good times coming up. Uh, so the second console, that's the big one, right? Uh, it looks it, like the it, Xbox logo. <laughs> Oh yeah, the 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 sunroof or, where, the, or the sunlight where it ruptures open like yeah. Yeah. those old ones were. Like, it was like when they were trying to be real extreme. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it looks like there's a they almost these almost look like uh, dialysis machines too. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. There's a, yeah. there's a big one that looks kind of like a cigarette dispenser, and there's one that looks like an over <laughs> a super a way over complicated like uh, gramophone. Yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. think of what the name of that is. Yeah, and there's also an atlas on the floor. Yeah, yep, there's an true. atlas on the floor, like a little globe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah, Alice, sorry, globe. globe. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. So the second device, right, is the a globe uh, is a type okay. of atlas. <laughs> <laughs> so the second uh, device from the left is a video playback machine. Uh huh. Like the it's best a, words it's a I could use. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a TiVo. <laughs> but uh, when you um interact with it, it says play the video question mark. Yeah. And you can say yes or no, and so you know, of course, yes. And then you have four options, or like three options, and a don't watch. I thought don't watch was the name of the video. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought it might be too. I got flashbacks to like when my dad would like record the Flyers game or something, and then like on the label of the VHS tape, he would be like, "Dads, do not watch Flyers game. <laughs> <laughs> um, do not so tape over." <laughs> the the three options that you have here are the original crisis, what is weapon, and confidential. Yeah, and weapon is in quotes. Right, right. Weapon. So, yeah, weapon, weapon, whip, weapon, whip, weapon. Anyway, sorry. Um, John Freeman. Sorry have we ever discussed that? We know about that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, so I went for the original Crisis, right? The the first one. Yeah, we're going to do this in order. In order there. Yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, yeah, so that kicks on, um, like, uh, from the same perspective that we see the room in, um, we, like, see this video playback. And I'm actually noticing now that the, like, Xbox logo, uh, like, I um thing it, it, like the the window is is open in the video which i didn't even notice in my first uh playthrough and then it looks like there's a little more uh i don't know more atmosphere yeah, yeah well all the machines are also emanating light as well true That's yeah true. yeah they're, they're all like fully functional and there's more light and everything but we see two uh two this people standing f- there yeah, yeah and this is a flashback as we basically but <laughs> yeah except we're watching it on video instead of being told about it yeah yeah um but standing there is a scientist and someone we've seen once before. Yeah. During uh, Elmira's story about Aerith, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is her mother, Ifalna. So this is a video of her and this scientist. Yeah. Who we who we know, we know this scientist, but we yeah, haven't it, if you, ever seen them. 
Yeah, and if you uh, if you actually check the name of this house when you open the menu, it's uh, Guest's House. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the guy who discovered Genova, mm-hmm. and we learned a little bit about him in Cosmo Canyon. Oh, and yeah. We learned a little bit more about him in uh, Niepelheim because yeah. we were reading. Yeah, yeah, we, that's right. You're right. Oh, we yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember, I can't remember where, but I remember Hojo saying like, oh, Gast, you fool, you were so close or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, at some point. <laughs> yeah. And there was uh, like, there was, um, I, I, I also remember how they were talking about like the difference between Hojo and Gast and how Gast was a brilliant scientist and Hojo was, you know, not nearly uh, as, as brilliant. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, so we get this video of these characters and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and say his name because we know who it is. But um, Gast says, okay, camera's ready. And he, he turns to Ifalna and says, Then Ifalna, please tell us about the Cetra. Mm-hmm. Who's us? I think, I think, I think it's, it's, so him in the since video. He's filming it, okay. yeah, yeah. Since he's filming it, I feel like this is his way of doing research and you know, he's gonna share this with, you know, other other scientists and, and the like. Um also he does definitely look a lot like Ron Swanson. Oh yeah. He's got a, a bitchin' mustache. He's he wearing some, you know, like dark, like brown and tan clothes with a <laughs> scientist's uh, like jacket over it. A skinny Wilford Brimley. Yeah, he's a fine-looking <laughs> man. He's a f- fine, fine fella. Uh, but yeah, so Ifalna, she she kind of launches into this, right? And we don't really know their relationship at this point, right? Because what right. we know is that like the Shinra captured her at one point. So I think during this first video, we're not really sure of the nature of the relationship between Gast and Ifalna, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, but she says, 2,000 years ago, our ancestors, the Cetra, heard the cries of the planet. Then everything the fir- changed when the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she says, the first ones to discover the planet's wound were the Cetra at the Knowles Pole? Is that does that sound right like to you guys? Beyonce Knowles pole. <laughs> pole. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, Knowles hmm. pole. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gas says, "Tell us, Ifalna, where is the land called Knowles pole?" And uh, she says, "The Knowles pole refers to this area." The Cetra began a planet reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gas says, "Ifalna, what exactly does a planet reading entail?" And she says, "I can't explain it very well, but it's like having a conversation with the planet." It said something large, or I'm sorry, it said something fell from the sky, making a large wound. Thousands of Cetra pulled together, trying to heal the planet. But due to the severity of the wound, it was only able to heal itself over many years. Yeah. Uh, he says, do the ancients, or rather the Cetra, have special powers to heal the planet? And she says, no, it's not that kind of power. The life force of all living things on the planet becomes the energy. The Cetra tried desperately to cultivate the land so as not to diminish that needed energy. Um, and then, is this Gast talking? This next About line? I think so. the North Cave? Yeah, he says... I, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yes. He says, hmm, even here, so close to the North Cave, the snow never melts. So, I think that makes sense, right? Uh, before I continue on with that, what yep. they're saying is that, like because the planet needed so much energy to heal that wound, it can't grow anything up here, and that's why the snow never melts. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think that makes sense, yeah. Mm. I, that's kind of how I took it, anyway. Yeah, that that definitely uh, makes sense. Like, it, it, because of all the, the energy that's going into just healing it, like, it's kind of become a barren, uh, you know, just, like, snowy, cold place. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, um, he says, is that because the planet's energy is gathered here to heal the injury? And she says, yes, the energy that was needed to heal the planet withered away the land. Oh, there it is right there. <laughs> Never mind. There's the answer for that. Um, the planet tried to persuade the Cetra to leave the Knowles Pole, but dot, dot, dot. And she kind of like is having like, what would you say? She's like looking downward and kind of yeah. like looks she, worried. Looking like a little like dejected and like uh, like running out of energy almost. Like she's, you know, looking a little a little tired. Right, and so Gas says, "If Ifalna, let's take a break. And uh, and she kind of turns around, and she's, like, trying to go on. You know what I mean? She's like... Yeah. So, and I feel like that's the first instance that we have of, like, maybe what their relationship is like, that it's not entirely coerced or anything like that, that she's yeah. like, okay, no, 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 I do want to do this. Like, I do want to tell the story. Yeah, it's not typical um, Shinra stuff of just, like, no, like, you know, you're a subject, and you, you know, the way that we've seen Shinra inter- interacting with things. Right. And she says, I'm all right. When the Cetra were preparing to part with the land that they loved, that's when it appeared. Mm. It looked like 
our dead mothers and our dead brothers showing us specters of their past. Ooh. And so, like, that's fucked up. Something, like, came to them and looked like their relatives or whatever. Yeah. I guess, yeah. And uh, Gas says, who is the person that appeared at the North Cave? I haven't any idea. <laughs> and uh, Which I guess means he hasn't discovered Genova at this point. Maybe. Um, Maybe. I'm not I, sure. I took it a different uh, way. But we can continue on oh, okay. and then I can explain. Okay. She says, that's when the one who injured the planet, or the crisis from the sky, as we call it, came. First, it approached as a friend, deceived them, and finally gave them the virus. The Cetra were attacked by the virus and went mad, transforming into the uh, sorry, transforming into monsters. Then, just as it had at the Knowles Pole, it approached other Cetra clans and infected them with the virus. Oof. And then she like kind of like sits down. She like like talking about the story, right? Like it's yeah, it's obviously very traumatic, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Gast says, "You know what? You don't look well. Let's call it a day." And the yeah. video turns off. Um, so, so what were you saying? Yeah, so I kind of took it as um, this might be because um, we remember back to the episode where we were discussing Cosmo Canyon and what the ancients were saying about how uh, Professor Gast found a living ancient Genova and he was very excited oh. about. It. Then he found out something grave and came back and was like, "Oh no, we've made a huge mistake." Do you think this is him finding that out? I think this is where he found out that um, you know he made a huge mistake. Like I think he that, had already discovered Genova and was like, "Oh shit, this is an ancient." And then met Elfalna and was like, "Oh okay, another another one of the ancients, another one of the Cetra. Like I can get more information." She's like, "Oh yeah, we found this fucked up thing that like gave us all a virus and it was this great disaster." And from kills the sky. everybody. Yeah, and it was called Genova, and he's just like. Yeah, oh shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, I maybe should not have dug that thing up. I've made a huge mistake. Um, you know, I, I also <laughs> like the like, you know, like these games are all like fantasy games, but this has a very like either like Lovecraftian or even like yeah. sci-fi horror aspect. Like it's oh, very yeah. much like the thing, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, especially right. in this area where it's just uh, all like a scientific lab in yeah. in a very barren and like, <laughs> you know, snowy area. Uh, Kurt Russell plays Gast in the Hell remake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, that um, would be so fucking good. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so like, I, oh god, I love it. I love that super sick sci-fi stuff, man. When it's really dark, the thing like, is a so great he, movie. Yeah, no, it really is. Um, Kurt Russell but, wears a okay. big dumb hat. <laughs> so the the spoilery thing that we were talking about or whatever, right? I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up, and if we want to cut yeah. it, we can cut it. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Genova here, like this is the place, and I've been waiting for this line because I read about it on the Wikipedia, and I was like, "Where do they say that?" But it's right here that Genova has shape shifting abilities, right? Oh shit! And can turn oh. to other things. Very and so lovely. that's why I think when we, the only times that we've fought Genova, right? Like whenever we, or I'm sorry, the only times we've ever fought Sephiroth. He like leaves, and then there's like a writhing tentacle sitting there, right? And I think Genova's either like turning into those monsters or whatever or like maybe there's more than just the clones and sephiroth you know what i mean yeah uh-huh. yeah yeah because there's also genova like yeah i don't know that like could be a bit of a stretch but like some of that will become clear on the next episode we'll get like some answers to that yeah but i never really extrapolated that far but i think maybe that's why like sephiroth throws a thing down at us right and i think that maybe that's reason to believe that that was like a piece of genova that could then shape shift into like that gigantic big genova life thing yeah Oof. exactly i kind of i kind of got that or like that genova is kind of like uh like perfect mm-hmm. cell if you're familiar with dragon ball z canon <laughs> where like any kind of portion of her can be you know mutated into a giant form or something like that so much like John Carpenter's The Thing. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then, okay. So. so we need Kurt Russell ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> There's a spot in our party. <laughs> you know, he's the only one who can fill it. That's right. Um, so we go into the second video, and what I love about this is that, in, like, this is the first time in the game that we've been introduced to this whole concept, and it is just going to be a thing from here on out. Because I love when, like, because, like, right now I feel like a lot of the... Um, the loose ends are beginning to get tied up, you know? We're like, yeah. we're like, oh, this person knew this person. This person was related to this person. And everything's like kind of coming together. And, and I love that this is just a whole brand new thing that they just throw on us real quick here. Yep. So <laughs> the second uh, video is called What is Weapon, yeah. right? Weapon. Yeah. <laughs> And Web so on. it, it kind of starts the same way um, where it's just uh, you see Gast and you see Afalna 
And um, he kind of just walks over to her and he says, Afalna, can you comment on the thing called weapon? And she says, yes, professor. The one, <clears throat> excuse me, the one the professor mistook for a cetera was named Genova. <laughs> <laughs> so she says it right there, yeah. too. <laughs> that is <laughs> the like, crisis you, you from the sky. You idiot. <laughs> yeah. You fucked up. Yeah, so uh, that was the crisis from the sky. The planet knew it had to destroy the crisis from the sky. You In see, quotes. as long as Genova exists, the planet will never be able to fully heal itself. And uh, she says, back then, weapon was a weapon the planet produced by... Oh, no, no, no. So this is uh, this is Gas talking here now. And he says... So then, yeah. Yeah. He says, back then, weapon was a weapon the planet produced by its own will. And she says, yes, but there is no record of weapon ever being used. A small number of the surviving Cetra defeated Genova and confined it. And um, then uh, I believe it's Gast here also says the planet produced weapon, but it was no longer necessary to use it. So, That's Alfalna. Oh, OK. Yeah. And um, and then uh, Gast says, so weapon no longer exists on this planet. And uh, then she explains further and says, weapon cannot vanish. I it love that. A sleep weapon somewhere cannot on vanish. The planet. Hell yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, that, no that's totally <laughs> fine. And, um, and she says, it remains asleep somewhere on the planet. Even though Genova is confined, it could come back to life at some time. <laughs> Even though Genova's confined and hasn't been excavated from the northern ruins or whatever. And he's like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we'll never have to, to worry her. about that. Right, Professor? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, so, uh, then she g- continues and says, the planet has not fully healed itself yet. It's keeping watch on Genova. And then Guest asks, where is Weapon? And Ilfana says, I don't know. I can't hear the voice of the planet well. Times have changed. The planet is probably watching the situation closely. And then she kind of puts her ha- uh, like her hands to her head and, uh, you know, looks like she might be crying. And Professor Gast kind of like doubles over a little bit and puts his hand to his head. Yeah. Like, I think he I think this is where he's realizing like the gravity what of he's what, done, what he's done it like in error. And right. He, right. And he just says, thank you, Alfana. That will be all for today. Yeah. So that's oh so heavy yeah i love it and also we should point out that like you don't have to come into this house at all oh yeah again just most of the lore is just completely hidden where you have to come into this place which doesn't really have much i think there's like an item in the basement or something but you know it's just a normal you're just like oh okay whatever it's like there's scientific stuff but if you don't touch like the Mm. like like alex said the cigarette machine or whatever like you could just completely (laughs) miss all of this Mm. like i don't know if i ever actually like went through and, and thought about all of this like in my casual playthroughs of this game right right uh and then there's a third so there's there's actually two more videos right under yeah, right. confidential under confidential and like oh boy is this some information for us meaty these are these are some meaty bits right here oh yeah um once you click confidential it brings up another menu with two more videos that we can watch and they're both called daughter's record 10th day after birth and 20th day after birth yeah all right so and that's after birth with a space between it yes. yeah Not, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 20 days of after birth <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite hardcore band <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so the first one the first one there's no video actually yeah the, um don't they both have no video or my yeah the no the second one has video uh, yeah, the second one does have video. Right. But this one's just a black screen. Uh they couldn't get their Skype working. They were having audio, <laughs> they were having audio problems with it, so they had to have uh an Xbox headset and also their mic <laughs> to record the session. I am going to screenshot our Skype call right now just to <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, sorry, yeah, go we, ahead. Yeah, we started and um the screen's black, but we still have uh, text on the screen. Yeah. And uh it starts with a phone. And she says, what are you doing, prof- uh, I mean, honey? Yeah. Question mark. Oh, oh. Ooh, so me, my how things have changed. <laughs> things have, you know, yeah, I guess what happens when you spend enough time in the, the Arctic with someone. <laughs> yeah, right. And we all, I guess we don't really know. I mean, we could maybe go back and like piece together time frame. But I imagine that this is maybe a significant time after yeah. the right. other ones, right? Because just from the way that they're talking to each other, uh, during the first two, I would have to guess that they're not romantically involved in any way, shape, or form. So uh, the guess has been almost a year, a year maybe. Yeah, yeah so at, like, at minimum, yeah. So, yeah, so she says, what are you doing, Professor? I mean, honey. And Gast says, oh, I'm thinking of taping on video, but the video is not working right. <laughs> Skype problems? Yeah. So, <laughs> what are you going to tape? Is there something I haven't mentioned? And Gast says, no, that's not it. I'm going to record my beautiful daughter. 
Aww. And when she's sleeping, her face looks like an angel. Oh. Um, then if Falma says, first we have to figure out her name. We can take the video later. And Gas says, I've already decided. If it's a girl, then it'll be Eris. That's it. Eris. Well, there you go. There's both of Eris's parents. We now know who they are. Oh, there yeah. we go. The Fauna says, you are so selfish, but Eris is a good name. He he. It's a good name. Considering <laughs> Kimo, you're forgetful of yours. Aww. That's why he has to video everything. He's very forgetful. Yeah. <laughs> he's right? The oh, the videotape, he says. And then it go- <laughs> then and that's the end of that one. Yeah. He's the he's the nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> he's Dr. Doolittle starring Robert Downey yeah. Jr. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, yeah, like you said, that's the end of that one, right? And then we can go down to the other one. And, like, it's funny, too, because, like, I feel like the first two were kind of serious, and that one gives you a little bit of, like, lightheartedness, and yeah. you're like, oh, all right, things kind of worked out for them in a yeah, way, it's like, very sweet. for both of them. Yeah, and, like, you know, we're obviously uh, taking a little bit of a stretch, but just from, like, what people say about Gast and stuff like that and what people say about it falling like you have to imagine that they're like both pretty decent people or whatever yeah of course and like that this was like an entirely you know natural thing that happened and so like oh good they they found happiness together that's yeah. great you know what I mean they found um, love in a hopeless place they found love in a Knowles pole place uh so if you go to the one twentieth days after birth, oh, god damn it, twenty days after birth. <laughs> That's how horrible. This MS said twentieth days <laughs> after birth. <laughs> um, so we That's that one. Salo movie. Yeah, twenty, 20 days of after birth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as soon as we start the video, there actually is video on this one, and Ifalna is standing behind Gas and says, "Video again? You just got through taping." Yeah. And he turns around and goes, "Please don't say it that way. It's our lovely daughter, both yours and mine." Ooh. Like, which seems very performative to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like he's aware he has to like say it for the camera. Like, very I need expository. To say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yours and mine. <laughs> yeah. The ch- the child. Yeah. Is ours. The, the child that's ours. Yours and mine. The child that's ours. <laughs> Aerith, as we both named her. <laughs> <laughs> and then he looks at the camera and like winks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he says, don't you want to capture her childhood on videotape? And she says, if you keep doting on her like that, she won't grow up to be strong, which is a little fucked up, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> she's not even born They're yet. Like, oh, don't no, wait, be, she's born. Don't <laughs> be nice to her. She'll, <laughs> she'll turn into a wimp. Yeah. Uh, she says, Eris is different from the other children. I wonder what dangers await her. Which again is like... A weird, well, like, I don't know, like, okay, I'm not, to to tell everybody on the podcast, are listening to us, I'm not a parent, I don't have a kid, so I can't say, but I have to imagine that if I ever have a kid, I won't be like, I wonder what dangers you'll face, I wonder what sticky situations you'll have to get out, I'd be like, oh, I hope you don't have to deal with terrible things, <laughs> not like, what exciting, terrible adventures you'll well, have, I, mean, like, I don't know. Yeah, and I think it could also be like, Either I'm not like <laughs> other girls. I have dangers awaiting me. <laughs> it, it could also be. Uh, like, I gotta. Is it 10:30 already? I have to go. I have danger awaiting me. <laughs> yeah, I, I was kind of taking it just as she knows, like, kind of the plight of like a the planet and b like what's going on with the Cetra, and you know, uh, she's yeah. she's kind of here isolated, and I feel like especially with like what's about to happen, like there's a very good reason for them to be like this far away. And that's fair. She, I think she kind of um, either, you mm. know, just is thinking logically about it as Aerith being another one of the Cetra or just, you know, she might have like mother's intuition or Cetra intuition or whatever. The planet C- telling Cetra's her. intuition. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, but he says, he says, never say that. I will protect you and Aerith no matter what. You and Aerith are my only treasures. I'll never let you go. Aww. And she just goes, oh, I feel so much better now, darling. If Aww. I haven't met, if I hadn't met you, I'd... And then they like start to embrace. This is a really got- silly uh, animation too. Mm, yeah. Look, just because they're low poly animations, it looks like they're kind of like trying not to touch each other. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming really slowly, like maneuvering around each other. <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't get your polygon stuck inside of me again. This is like trying to act in like a kindergarten play. Yeah. <laughs> have to, like, <laughs> we, and then don't suddenly there is a yeah, and then knock room at the door. for Jesus. Yeah. There's a knock at the door. There's a fucking policeman's knock. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I do love this who part could, where he says, then, then, "Oh yeah, gas is a who? 
Who could that be? I was just about to. Damn, how could they intrude us on our private time together? And private time is in quotations. <laughs> but it's like, Very I was just good. about to, followed by our private time. Like, what, I know. Do like, what? Gas? Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, gas. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, and I fall and says, I'll send them away. And, and, yes, uh, at once. Yeah, who the devil? <laughs> and And she runs up to the door. Or not like runs, she just kind of strolls over to the door, opens it. Yeah, she says, said, I'll send them away. Yeah, and goes, I, I think, is it her saying this or the visitor saying this? Someone says, it. it's them. I think it's Ifalna saying that. I think, she's I think it is her. She she knows that whoever it is is someone to you know be afraid of. Yeah, and she runs back down the stairs and two Shinra guards come in mm-hmm. and uh, fucking... Following behind them is a another dude, another young man at this point yeah. in a lab coat, and he says, "Heh heh heh, I've been searching for you, Ifalna, or should I say, Setra? Real fucked up. Long time no see, Professor Gast. Yeah, he's just calling her by her race, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah like, real that's fucked real up. fucked up. Uh, yeah, and and Gast says, Hojo, how did you know? So like, ah, oh, motherfucking Hojo. Yeah, he's such a dick. Like he's like the true villain of this story. I feel like is fucking Hojo. He really is." Yeah, just hanging out on the beach. <laughs> what a monster! What diabolical yeah, what things could he be planning? Yeah, I wonder yeah. if they still He's make that shampoo that I like. <laughs> He's just laying there menacingly. <laughs> go 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 go. Uh, he says, "Believe me, I had to turn over a stone or two to find you. Two years I've waited. How? That's how much I wanted this new sample. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Which again, like, gross. And this uh, kind of again reminds me of." Uh, Wait, so is this implying that he's like been kind of like keeping tabs on their relationship? I wonder. I, because I he, think so. That's what I got this, from it. Like this is again giving me like vibes of um, the new Blade Runner, and we're yeah. like, like was it fate that brought you together, or was it by design? Like it was, yeah. right. It was like like ooh, is this like all premeditated? Like this is just yeah. Because the next line is uh, Gas says a new sample. You don't mean Aerith. Yeah, and, and Gas says, like mm, grabs Aerith. Hojo. It looks like he's like holding like yeah. By yeah. the scruff is sure, or by his neck even. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he says, "Aerith, what a nice name!" Ha ha ha. So yeah, like you were saying, like, did he show up at this time specifically because he was keeping tabs on them? Yeah, and was, was like, "Oh shit, there's a new Cetra. Uh, I can now yeah. go." Yeah, and especially, on. especially because um, it, going back t- uh, to uh, when we met him, I think for the first time in the Shinra headquarters, and we were talking yeah. to him and everything, and he was talking about how you know. For year, uh, he was he was saying the same shit that he was saying here, like um, like oh, I've waited so long for a new sample and stuff. Like when he was trying to like breed Red Thirteen and Aerith, right. he was saying like, Oof. oh, you know, we need a new sample. Like my research will need to go beyond y- your lifespan. Right, right, right. So he's kind um, of like had this whole fucked up like just plan in mind, like since even before all of that. Right. And I mean, this next line, too, uh, Gas says, that's it. I'm severing all the ties with Shinra. Yeah. Which, like, makes me wonder that maybe he was even sending reports back at this time and is, like, like there to study the Cetra and the Ancients. Or, and just like, so funded happens... by the Shinra, like a research or grant even... or something. Could have been yeah. saying that this could be even what the videos were for, even. Yeah. Personally. That's kind of what I thought, is that he was taking those videos for that yeah. purpose. Yeah. Um, this could and, be like I, I mean like it, there's kind of a recurring theme for like every character we've met where like you know things start off and everyone trusts Shinra to bring about a better world and a more convenient world and uh, like through science and electricity and power like make the world a better place and then it's kind of just seeing like how when they get so much like power they are kind of unstoppable and you realize how like monstrous they are right uh, he says and like, oh man, like I feel this, man. I feel this right here. He just kind of like doesn't kneel down, but he kind of like hunches over and he just says, Hojo, please leave. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, oh God, I know exactly what he's feeling. Is that moment of desperation of just like, yep. I can't necessarily do anything to stop them. So like your last thing that you can do is just be polite and say, please leave. Yeah, and just like a, try and like, a, 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 like a, appeal to their humanity, which like Hojo just kind of always proves he has none. Right, right. And uh, Ifalna runs up and says, please, Eris has nothing to do with it. All you want is me, right? And he's like, Ifalna, you know, like, oh, no. And, and fucking Hojo, man, he says, I actually, he goes, I'll need all of you for my experiment. And like, what a motherfucker. Yeah. He's like, not even coming to take just one of them. He's like, no, 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 I'm coming to take all of you. There's yeah, no one will get out of here. Yep. 
Um, and he talks to Gast and says, you understand, don't you, Professor Gast? We can change the future of the planet. And, <laughs> and like, Gast says, don't worry, Ifana, I'll take care of this. And uh, Hojo says, please don't put up a fight. I don't want any harm to come to my precious sample. Ugh. Like, ugh. ugh, fucking what an asshole. Yeah. And, and then, then he notices that he's being videotaped. Yep. Right, yeah. So he turns around and he says, what a funny looking camera. Guard, destroy it. Yeah. And we see one of the Shinra guards turn around and fire at the camera and the video goes out. But, yeah. But we, but can we st- still have the audio. That's right, yeah. Um, he just got working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we get the text boxes and there's no like names associated with them, but I think we can kind of infer which yeah. one's which. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, or someone says, <laughs> be careful with her. Ha ha ha. Hojo. And then... What what are you doing, Professor? Mm-hmm. And then Ifalna, take Eris and run. And then you hear like a little commotion, and then a, a, you hear a shot fired. Yeah. You hear like a, a gun go off, and someone says, "Ah, darling." Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a little bit of silence, and you see, oh, and uh, don't forget the child. And then there's like a, again a little pause, and then hmm, a video, the ancients weapon. <laughs> what a mountain of treasure. Thank you, Professor. Ha, ha, ha. What a, a treasure, treasure house of, of knowledge. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a so, treasure like, house of Knowles post or poll. <laughs> <laughs> so real fucked up. Like, yep. He fucking runs in 20 days after Aerith's bur- uh, born, kidnaps Ifalna and Aerith, and then fucking shoots and kills Professor Gast. Yep. Uh. Like, real fucked. Yeah. And I oh, I, I think that's... I think him finding the, uh, the bit about weapon and, um, you know, the ancients and stuff means that uh guest probably wasn't sending information back to shinra like i mean he he just oh, cut his ties with yeah. it but uh mm-hmm. you know like if that was stuff I, I mean it could also just be that it takes a while to get the the vhs tapes or whatever to shinra but like i kind of get no, the feeling I think that what you're saying makes more sense yeah i think guest is kind of just like i don't like everything that i'm learning i want nothing to do with shinra so are we to assume that uh, a phone will probably go away yeah, I, because in the flashback, yeah, she makes it to no, Midgard. no, no. The, 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 she, she was. She said she was held for uh, several years, and oh. then they escaped. Because Eris is like a little kid of like four or five years old, right? When they make it to Midgard, in this, yeah, she's like less, like twenty less, days old. Twenty days old. This was about twenty-two years ago. Yeah, we can assume. Mm, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, Which I think is it's... why you know Hojo looks dashing. <laughs> well, that's why. <laughs> yeah, he's. I don't think we mentioned it, but uh, Hojo um, looks younger because he just doesn't have long hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He Does he have, have a... eyebrows? <laughs> I don't think I, he does. I, I don't think, think I saw. Are... I, I don't know if it was a good enough shot um, to see. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, no eyebrows. He doesn't look nearly okay. as gaunt. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. With his hands aren't behind his back all the time, which I think is just like the for some reason anime look of if you have your hands behind your back and leaning forward, you just look old. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um so yeah, so I think it's I think it's reasonable to assume that they were both captured and then Aerith grew up in the Shinra lab for mm-hmm. the first like four or five years of her life, right? And then they finally escaped, and then she was killed escaping. I mean the following in- injured, yeah. And then uh Elmira took Aerith and raised her as her own daughter from there. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we now have the full history of Aerith. Uh, t- too little death. fucking too late. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from beginning to well, end. Yeah. book ends it. Yeah. All right. I've been working on a joke for the uh, the basement of this. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot about the basement. Of this house. There's a turbo ether. Hell yeah. And... Uh, is oh, it, I it, forgot there was a basement. Yeah. And it's not actually really even a joke. I was just like, oh, turbo ether. Same amount of syllables as Judas Priest's Turbo Lover. <laughs> we can go, I'm your Turbo Ether. <laughs> so, do you guys kind want of to grab my guitar and try to play it? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a C minus gag, but you know, <laughs> it's entirely. Um, uh, there's too many C minus gags that are entirely way too fitting for this podcast. <laughs> We're a solid C minus podcast. So, uh, so we had the that set of scenes, and I feel like. Like, those are kind of, like, you know, we've learned a lot about the lore. There's a lot of, like, really serious shit going on in there. And uh, this next scene is the exact opposite of it and is a good... That's how this game goes, man. Is a man. good-ass time. <laughs> I mean, after Barris all thing, uh, like, let's go to the park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah let's, let's go play on a roller coaster. <laughs> um, no, but... Uh, so that was that's really all there is to do in this house. So I was like, "All right, here we go. Time to run down this oh, yeah. steep grade. Get down to the uh, the the crater. Time right? to hit the slopes. Time to hit the slopes, baby." And when we run down there, there's a person who's like, "Whoa, it's dangerous. You can't go down there." 
<laughs> and you can either say, I'm still going, or thanks for your kindness, <laughs> which I was like, I'm uh -huh. still going. <laughs> and Still going strong, baby. I'm still going. <laughs> you can't stop me. I'm like a train. And uh, <laughs> as soon as you say, hey, I'm still going, they say, what the, who are those people over there? It looks like trouble. And I, I fucking love this because, like, w at this point, there's only one, like, screen that comprises the outside of Icicle Inn, right? Like, all of the different houses are on one screen. And when we're getting ready to run down the slope, we're quite a distance away from the camera, right? Like, yeah. we're way out in the background at this point. And <laughs> as as foreground as you could possibly be, like, taking up a <laughs> lot of the front of the screen, you see fucking Elena's head pop up from the bottom looking at the camera. She must like, be, like, on a crane or something. Yeah, I, well, I imagine <laughs> that, like, maybe we're looking down off of a hill at maybe right. Icicle Inn, oh, and maybe. she's on top of the, <laughs> of the hill, but it's super cartoony, the way her head just goes whoop and, like, pops up at the bottom of the screen. And she, maybe she's just gigantic. Mm. <laughs> and she turns around and goes, oh, there they are, hurry! And you see, like, <laughs> Shinra soldiers walk up beside her, and they take up a good, like, third of the screen, and it's fucking hilarious. This is very Team mm. Rocket-y right now. It's yeah. super Team rocket -y. Except it's just Elena yeah. and some goons. Like, she's usually with, like, the rest of the crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's actually out here they to... They're on a solo mission. Yep, yep. So she's moving up. And uh, so they pop back down, again, in really cartoony style, off of the camera. Like, they go, whoop, and, like, they're off of the screen. And then we see them running toward us. And, like, Cloud kind of, like, runs back toward the camera a little bit to meet them. Like, he's not like, oh, shit. He's like, oh, these fucking assholes. And so he kind of, like, walks up to meet them. And by the time she gets there, she's like, oh, Cloud. Oh, and, like, wheeze. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, wheeze. Yeah. She I goes, won't let you go any further. Yeah, okay. no, God, Delane is so good. I always say it every time, but I, I love her. I love too when um when she says uh, I won't let you go any further, and Cloud just shrugs. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, well, <laughs> yeah, and he uh, says, uh, "What's down there?" And then uh, she says, "It's a secret." I know. Yeah, I'll space that. It's secret. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so good. She's like probably like reminding uh, herself not to. Yeah, she's got to tell yeah. herself. <laughs> it's like it's a secret. I've yeah. heard about these. <laughs> uh, and she says, "It really doesn't matter. You've really got guts messing up my boss like that." <laughs> and Cloud goes, "You mean boss Sang? Well, that wasn't us. Sephiroth did it." <laughs> yeah, and she's like, "No, liar! Don't think you can fool yeah, me." Yeah, I know. I know. It's like the one time that it wasn't us. Yeah, it's like, like no. That was that wasn't us, actually. Especially because <laughs> if we kicked his ass, we would have been like, hell yeah, fuck that guy. We kicked his ass. Yeah. And actually, the very next line, uh, after she says, liar, don't think you can fool me, he goes, I'm not lying. It was Sephiroth. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, like, doubles down on it. He's like, no, I really yeah. didn't this time. Uh, <laughs> which, actually, we've never fought Sang, now that I think about it. We've never injured Sang. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> So he's always been on his helicopter or just yeah. already injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah or already <laughs> injured. Uh, she says, Don't try to act innocent. I'll never forget it. Yeah. And he just goes, Oh man. <laughs> Looks like talking alone won't cut it. You're gonna have to feel some pain. She yeah, says. she says she's gonna have to feel some pain. Yeah. Just you and me. And so like I love it because like No, that's what so the so there's a, one of her goons says, just you and me, I think. Oh, is it? No, Maybe. I thought, I thought oh, she oh. said that. Well, the script says soldier. Oh, well, oh it, it, I mean, it, and then the lady's like, "No, I can handle it." Oh, you're There's right. There's no way you can avoid my punch. You're, you're oh, completely yeah. right. And the soldier's like, "What? Y yeah, and <laughs> yeah, you're right." One of the soldiers says, "You and me," and she like, "Yeah," she tells him no, and she's like, oh, "I'll handle him. He can't avoid my punch." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the soldier goes, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the screen pops up that says, dodge that punch. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the option of pressing left, up, or right. Yeah. So what did everybody get? I looked at my controller, and I looked up, and I already got punched. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to hit uh, left. It's like, what? I was trying to hit left, but I didn't do it in enough time and totally just got fucking punched. All right. So I dodged it. So you guys tell me what happens when you get punched. So Elena punched me, and I in cloud instantly like falls over, and she says, Why? Why didn't you try to duck? There's no way they can climb the Great Glacier anyway. Put them in some house in the village. And then you just fucking wake up on the floor of Gasp's house. <laughs> That's it. They're just like, well. Yeah, they didn't we have. We stopped them. They didn't, they didn't have a plan for you after that. They were just like, oh. Well, I guess that's that, then. Yeah. I don't know, just throw them in a house. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't lock you up. They don't put a guard on you or anything. They're just like, well, we did what we came here to do. <laughs> like, saying, just like, go, yeah, go stop them. And then she's like, well, I did it. I did it. I stopped them. I don't know for how long, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just like, she probably got, so, check your pockets. <laughs> have you guys seen what happens if you dodge? I have not. 
Oh my fucking god, it is so good. Okay, so I hit left, and so Cloud sidesteps, and she does a full swing and trips herself. Oh, and, yeah. And, and she starts, like, somersaulting, and she goes all the way toward the background, and she's like, oh, no. And she ro- and the soldiers go, uh, Elena? Elena? And they start running after her, and she fucking rolls all the way down the fucking hill and starts rolling down the snowboarding slope. And they all the goons, like, run after her, and are like, Elena, wait for me. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. It's so good. And uh, the person who stopped you before yeah, goes, so good. what the? Well, they were sure we're weak for Shinra. <laughs> and he goes, sorry, I ran off. I thought there was going to be trouble. <laughs> I love it. Because like, she like turns into like a little donut and just starts like rolling. She's like, woo. <laughs> and just like That's rolls so down good. the hill. It's so good. I'm, I'm so disappointed she did like turn into like a giant snowball. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of that guy um, who, uh, you know, is like, oh, they're pretty weak for Shinra. Um, when he says it's dangerous, please don't go. If you say thanks for your kindness, he says, no, no, I just did what came natural. <laughs> <laughs> a very like labored. Like, yeah. Oh, no, no. Hey, I'm not. Um, a he- I'm no hero. Hero is a strong word. <laughs> I would call me a savior. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then they say anyway. Or anyhow, you'll need a snowboard to get down that hill. You want to learn how to ride one? And you can say, maybe I should, or no, not interested. And if you say not interested, they say, all right, fathead, but don't blame me if you get hurt. And like, fathead's a good insult that we've seen multiple times. (laughs) Fathead. I I love it so much. Yeah. And if you try to do it anyway, like, he goes and runs and grabs you and goes, no, you can't. (laughs) You (laughs) mustn't. (laughs) You mustn't. And you won't make it without a snowboard and a map. Um... So uh, at this point too, so you, so at this point you have to go uh, talk to that kid and get their, his snowboard. But if you try to leave the town from this point, you can't because mm-hmm. there are Shinra guards blocking the entrances. And uh, one of them says, "This village is now under martial law, and you have two options: do as you're told or kick his butt." <laughs> and so I said, "Kick his butt!" And as soon as like Cl- Cloud like winds up to punch this Shinra soldier, and the other one goes, "Stop it! There's kids around." <laughs> <laughs> it's like I feel like it's a good like because like every time we see the Shin regards like they're always a bunch of like dopes or whatever like and like they do like especially in like the Junon part of the game where like they like show humanity right in the way that like they're friends with each other and that they have like lives or whatever yeah I and, think about this a lot when watching Star Wars because like you could have joined the Academy and been part of the Empire eventually yeah like, oh all these guys are just dudes they're right. like, just like you and me yeah. yeah but they just picked the wrong side yeah <laughs> But uh, and one of them goes, "Look, I sh- I probably shouldn't tell you, but I hear something big's going down up north. <laughs> <laughs> the president is gonna be there, so would you please just lay low for a while? And if you talk to the other one, he says, "Don't be angry with me. I'm just doing my job." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, again, you know, you carry some responsibility for just doing your job, but yeah, that's what exactly <laughs> another time and another place. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but they're they are a bunch of fucking goofballs. So you can't actually get into a fight. So you're locked in at this point. There's no going back out to the world map. Yeah. Right. Did uh did anything in like the the village change for you, Curtis? Um, after that, because like now in after like waking up in Gast's house, there's like the little girl that was right outside of there is like, uh, sledding down the hill like right yeah. next to Gast's house is very cute. Yep. And there's like a guy. Yeah, on, yeah. Like, I guess on the roof. Yeah, he's like cleaning the chimney or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that happened for me too, and that wasn't that way until now. Yeah. Right? And he, if you if you actually go up, you can talk to him. I tried to, and I couldn't. Oh, really? I get it. He says, uh, "Yeah." So I got. You have to kind of go in the side of the, like. There's like a ladder, I think. You can barely oh, see it. Oh, okay. But um, you can talk to him like as if you're about to climb it. And he says, "When I first moved here, I saw a man with a black cape heading north." Oh, oh shit! Man. Like when he first moved here, like how long ago was that? You think? Yesterday, I don't know. That's the <laughs> well, thing. It, there's, we'll, there's we'll have t- answers for that question. There's next a weird episode. time frames because <laughs> the uh, the woman in that you. Uh, the mother of the snowboard boy is like when I moved here, like my my boy. Uh, oh yeah, so I think like, they how just have all in? been here. Like, oh but, yeah, because if if because if those people are living in the same house together, they may have both just moved here recently. Yeah. But then yeah, he just says it seems strange seeing a black cape against the snowy white, which Ooh, is true. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> um, striking. So you can image. go inside and talk to that kid earlier, and he just says. Hey, I got hurt on my skateboard or my snowboard. Now I can't go out for a while. Hey, I'll give it to you. Tell me if you get good at it. Yeah, get good. <laughs> get, get good, good. scrub. <laughs> and you get the snowboard. Yeah, you receive the key item snowboard. And then if you talk to his mom, she says, "Teach me too, okay?" Oh, <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> cool, cool mom. Cloud comes back and he's just like, that's what he does after all of this. <laughs> like teaches yeah. people how to snowboard. Exactly. Um, which I think it is time for us to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the snowboarding mini game. Sounds Let's do some good stretches. To me. How, how about this for a, a little uh, a little spoiler alert for uh, our next section? I fucking hate the snowboard game. <laughs> Yeah, fucking same. Hate the snowboard game. Same. Well, you should do some stretches. You need to take the kids' advice and just get good. You're both fucking terrible, but neither of you are near as terrible as this fucking mini game. This podcast is under martial <laughs> law. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Do, you, do I need to talk about it, or do you, <laughs> or do you want to you want to talk about this fucking? Game you know what? Game? I, okay, so where are we? Where, okay, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, welcome back, fatheads. <laughs> 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 so I I have a screenshot pulled up here for this mini game, and it's just Cloud on the snowboard, completely planked and flat, <laughs> and a snowman uh, that's a very cute Moogle snowman, but it's just flying away because I guess I took a screenshot as I hit a fucking snowman. <laughs> okay, so yeah, but before we go in, the guy in the in the brush who's like trying to keep you from going, like he actually tells you how to snowboard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. That he knows how to snowboard. Hell yeah. <laughs> He's a, he must be real cool. I mean, I guess right. everyone here should know how to snowboard, but. You know. Yeah, it's their main, their main form of transportation in this godforsaken place. There was a lot of <laughs> command controls I was not I was not ready for because my whole yep. screen just filled with like yeah. here's the controls. All right, yeah. here we go. It's press up, go faster. Press backward, go slower. Oh, I did press not left that. and right, turn left and right. Press left and right and the R and the L buttons. Turn more than just left and right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like like drifting. Yeah, uh, it's, X. it's called drifting. You're you're not out of control. You're not in control. <laughs> I was gonna say X, but that's not right on the switch. The lower button, <laughs> whether it's X on yours or it's a B or whatever. Cancel. I believe it is Y. Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, one of them will let you jump, and your jump height will be incredibly fucking variable depending on where you do it at. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Um, just like in Tony Hawk. And fucking god fucking speed. Now you know what? Maybe it's not that bad. I don't know. Like remember earlier when we had our Gungaga episode. Um, Gungaga. Gungaga. Uh, <laughs> Justin was saying that this is actually his favorite mini game. He was like, "This is the one that holds up the best." And I was like, "You are fucking crazy." But you know, to each their own. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I, you'll love this, listener. You might enjoy this little mini game. Yeah, if I could play it over and over again, and like actually, like the kids said, get good at it, I might like it more. Yeah. But I'm just really bad at it, and for some reason, like the way the controls are, it makes me want to play it like uh, Mario Kart. And Mario Kart, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> no, by no means. Um, so, yeah. So it's it is more a, fun with friends. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a a downhill snowboarding mini game. Right? Uphill snowboarding mini game would be worse. <laughs> <laughs> if you get if you get your tricky meter up high enough, Cloud can do the worm on his on his board. <laughs> I was gonna, yeah, I was thinking about making some guys like. Oh. You, so this whole thing starts, and there's like this quick little like action like camera swoop, like it is like, like a, a sports snowboarding. game. It's so weird. Like I was actually kind of comparing it a little bit to like the victory pose that Sonic does at the end of every level. Okay. Where this is like kind of camera sweep and it's like a thumbs up and like, all right, here we go. Kind of yeah. thing. Like it's, <laughs> and we're oh, yeah. gearing up for this mini game. And I don't know, is there supposed to be music in this section? I, I don't d- think so. No. Because <laughs> I think it felt like there like... was supposed to be music and there was no music. No, there's none in mine either. And then I think uh, that definitely a... dehances your experience. Dehances. <laughs> yeah. Dehance. It's, it's, Dehance. Uh... It's just, it's supposed to be that uh, Run DMC song. It's tricky to rock around, to rock around. It's right on time. It's tricky. <laughs> hey, uh, Mickey, I can... you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. It's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> I can take that joke again with uh, Goldfinger's uh, Superman, if that joke is funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what is it called? Where they like they have on movies, they like give scenes to audiences and see if the audience likes this scene or that scene better. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, like a, a about... test audience or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. test audience said do you like it better with the goldfinger joke one kid with... loves the speedo man <laughs> <laughs> the guys who didn't even go snowboarding <laughs> um uh. yeah so it's just like a little downhill jam uh and the reason that i don't like it as much as i don't like it is that i feel like um even your normal speed like it, it feels like i'm going slow but maybe like either the draw distance of the 
of the uh, of the slope, or even like the speed at which things just come up on you feels like incongruous to the speed I'm actually going. Like it feels like I'm going slow, and then shit just pops up in your face, and you just don't have time to react to it. And the the I mean, camera's it's kind of like, like the motorcycle game, where like mm-hmm. there are things just coming at you real fast, but yeah. like it does feel kind of. I mean, definitely around the same speed, I think. Maybe so. Maybe. Yeah. I, I know it's, that when, whenever you touch anything, even if you just barely scrape a wall, it kills your momentum. Even if you do because like if you hit something too fast, you'll just fall flat on your face and everything just stops and you have to wait a couple seconds for cloud to get up. But even yeah. if you just like poke something, like you just hit the wall a little bit, it sends you like backward and across the stage again and it takes time and it just feels like oh god there goes all my momentum again and so i felt like i was just starting and stopping the whole time but if you hit an obstacle the obstacle usually just disappears yeah, yeah but i mean like if you touch like the wall right oh yeah yeah the walls yeah the walls will either push you away like away and backward a little bit or you'll just fall on your face and that'll be that and there's also right. there's things yeah. that you need to collect but i don't know if it does anything at this point Balloons. in the game at this yeah, point there's of the just game, different it colored. Yeah, there's just different colored balloons that you can collect, and there's like, not even a counter. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's just it's a balloons. timer and your speed. Motherfucking balloons! It's a, it's a, it's a, ba- it's a box of balloons. <laughs> we got big <laughs> ones and short ones and ones that look like balls. <laughs> anyway, um, we were making two completely different re- references. <laughs> well, <laughs> Both my... of which went completely over my head. Mine was Brad Neely, so it's the better of the two. No, hey. Mine was Tim oh, and Eric. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey. It's, it's a, box, okay. it's oh, a bag shit. of balloons. Brad Neely versus Tim and Eric. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a tough call. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, like, the you, you actually go a good half of this course, and there's just one direction that you can go, or one path. Yeah. And you'll, like, run into, like, Chocobo snowmen. Snowkabos. Uh, Snowkabos. Yeah, there's so there's little um, there's little Moogle uh snowmen that are very cute and then later on there's little uh Chocobo ones that are like moving slightly. Like it's very very cute. They it, looks, looks, it almost looks like they're like real Chocobos like covered in snow that are trying to like <laughs> move away or something. Very disturbing. They look so small until you're right up on them like, "Oh, wait, these things are like 10 feet tall." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's another thing. I think the positioning of the camera in the mini game, like it doesn't lend to being able to tell where you are very Especially well. Especially when everything is just white. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean the whole background is just white. It's just the... shades of gray. Yeah, Bare- barely, <laughs> barely. Yeah. yeah, I guess and, the only um, sense of perspective you have is because the slope is more or less the same width the entire way down. Right. right. Yeah, and that's kind of the only sense of perspective you have. Yeah. And then, like, you'll come to these turns, and instead of just being like fucking normal ass turns, they're like snake winds Ooh. and like triple diamond. Yeah, it, it's it's so hard to navigate them because like by the time you've turned on one, you're facing the wall, and there's no time to actually turn around. Oh. So like. After I ran to the wall the first couple times, I just held backward and just like scooted, like basically scooted on my butt down like those sections. Where I'm just like, I guess I'll just take them at ten miles an hour or less. I suppose yeah. just like real snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. uh, and much like in real snowboarding, uh, there's areas that have like trees, and when if you crash into one of the trees, it just falls over and disappears. <laughs> Sometimes and they're uh, like it looks like the trees are like two D models. So uh, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, kind of like in in Smash Brothers when you'd pause the screen and like there would be like the uh, the rice ball or something and you could change the perspective of the camera and you would just and realize it's two D. Yeah, it's like a piece of cardboard. Oh yeah, yeah. decals. Yeah, yeah I love so it. They're kind of like that. And then at a certain point, there's actually like uh, multiple pathways that you can take. All right, forks. forks. Yeah, yeah. There's two For, sets of them. For a second, I thought this is what the map was. Relating to whoa, because the map that we get almost looks like a ski slope map. Oh yeah, it's like true, okay, true. we're starting at the top, and these are like the different ways down and stuff. Like my brain was like yeah. thinking like, oh, if I take a left or right, it's like I'm bringing me somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, which it probably does. But well, I yeah, was gonna say like, dep- it does. Yeah, depending on which uh, fork you end up taking, you'll appear in a different area. Oh. And I actually did this twice because I accidentally left the glacier area cl- coming up, and I was like, God damn it, I have to do the fucking snowboarding thing again because I was like. <laughs> Oh, I can walk up to Icicle Inn again. I'll just walk there and just walk back now that I've already done the thing. And when you try to leave Icicle Inn, you have to do the fucking game again. Oh and my I was God. like, no. So I had to do it a second time. But what's funny is the second time when I was done um, snowboarding, the text that I got changed. So 
we'll get to that in just a second here. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to say about the snowboarding game? Um, it would have been improved by the Abominable Snowman coming out and eating. Oh my god, I was going to say that too. Yeah, it's, it definitely reminds me of that old game. Uh, ski what, free. what was it for? Yeah, yeah, ski free. <laughs> <laughs> ski free. And or you know, a soundtrack would have also been acceptable. Yeah, yeah, like any sort of just. Jerry was a race car pop. driver. Oh my goodness, that would I mean, be. Great. I know that's Tony Hawk thing, but some forty one or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, Goldfinger. Um. So yeah. So once we get to the end of it, wherever like, we end up, wherever we end up, fucking the end. No man. No matter which direction you take, the end of the slope is just a fucking cliff, and Cloud just jumps off into this like white abyss, which felt very Sonic Adventure too to me. Yeah, yeah, so just, yeah like, boom, absolutely. Like it's like oh, and then we're off to like a cutscene. Da na 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 da na na ba na na na. <laughs> or Barely city made escape. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, city escape. Trust me, and we will escape from the ice flint. <laughs> Alex, how many times have you seen City Escape live by the people who actually wrote it? Uh, I mean, I saw Johnny, the singer, perform it well a lot of times at too many games. Yeah. <laughs> um, I still have his number in my phone. It's really weird. Like, <laughs> thinking, like fifty year old, fifty year old me. I should just hit him up. I'm like, hey man, what are you? Come thinking? on our podcast. What are you up to tonight? Skype in. Yeah, <laughs> but um. Yeah, I think a lot about City Escape. That fucking baseline slaps. <laughs> Yo, that Yo baseline the updated version of it is fucking Yeah, they just like, let's go even harder. Like, the baseline <laughs> intro is like <laughs> 10 times more notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has a, has a turnaround bridge in it. Don't you dare cut that out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. Sloping around at the speed <laughs> of cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> so he jumps off into the fucking abyss toward death, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and uh, when the screen like comes back up from like fading out to white, it so depending on where you jumped at, it'll be you'll be in a different area of this. Depending glacier. on our route down the hill, yeah, yeah, saying, right. Which forks we've uh, taken, right? You'll be in different areas of like the uh, the area that we have the map for. This and, is called the icy fields now. Yeah, they the glacier fields. Sometimes they refer to it as the glacier, so I just call it that a lot of times. Yeah, but yeah, that's the area. Um, Great glacier. Yeah, okay. that's what it is. So what's Certainly funny is, is like I said, I did it twice, and the first time I got one scene, and the next time I got a scene with slightly different text. Interesting. Oh, weird. So, yeah, yeah. So I'll read what I got uh, the second time and tell you where it's different. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so. When I landed, all of my party members are just, like, face down in the snow. So I have Sid, Yuffie, and Cloud. The first time I landed by a single tree with nothing around, and the next time I landed in, like, a little snowy forest. Right. right. Yeah. And Cloud says, Ugh, I guess we're still in one piece. And here's the thing that was different. He didn't say anything after that the first time and continued on with the conversation. The second time he goes, well, I feel like we didn't go very far at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was in like the very first area, like closest to the entrance of the uh, the glacier field. He's like, well, we didn't get very far at all anyway. <laughs> He's like disappointed. Nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then no matter which one you go to, he says, is everyone all right? And I had Sid who says, I'm too old for this. Damn. <laughs> and Yuffie says, God, I can't stand it. Oh, that's so um, good. Uh, Barrett, when, when you ask uh, if everyone's all right, he says, of course. And then um, Tifa... Of course. Says, of course. <laughs> um, Tifa just yes. says, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Yuffie says, we need the map, okay? Let's see it with Y. Yeah. We like the button Y. Um, he's, Cloud says, it sure is cold. We'll freeze if we stay here any longer. Yeah. Which, so I guess we should talk about that now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, why don't you do it? Sure. So um, the way that this area works is uh, if you walk around in it for too long, I think it's like something like 154 steps um, oh, is, is how the game counts it. Uh, yeah. You will eventually get so cold that you like collapse and end up um, at a different portion of the map where there's like a, a cabin that we're going to get to. Uh, that's kind of our end goal for this area. Right. So, I yeah, I figure what we'll do is we'll talk about that last, even though it, when you're playing this game... More like almost certainly, you're going to go to that cabin before you hit all these points that we're talking about. Because yeah, in 150 exactly. something steps, there's just not enough time to get to all these areas. Yeah, like um, you're gonna you're gonna pass out a couple of times if you want to collect everything that this area has to offer. And this uh, this area has a lot of really awesome things to offer. So like you definitely right. want to get everything that you Loot. can. So what's interesting about it too the is loot. that it doesn't follow like 
map rules necessarily. Like sometimes you'll enter or, or you'll leave a screen to the north and the next scene or the next screen, you'll be at the top of the screen walking downward. So yeah. like it doesn't have like uh like logic to it in that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the the kind of way to explain this area, um, I found a really good uh like guide for it on jegged.com. And yeah. uh there's there's fourteen areas. Um that at least according to this like guide for it. And uh I have found a map as well, which I'll send to you. Um, yeah. It's really it's actually really helpful. And I actually tell um on this page I'm looking actually tells you how to get to every if you take the snowboard how you take the snowboarding route actually tells you um how to get to each section. It's oh yeah, cool. this there's is four, there's cool. four different there's four different outcomes. Yeah, so this yeah. is actually a lot more helpful than the one that I saw where um like the the one that you have is a lot more Cuz I landed like on the a, tree screen as well, yeah. Curtis. Yeah, I okay. also landed at the uh, the tree screen, which I believe you get by uh, doing a right and then a left. Yes, or, there are three yeah. locations which could be either be in the foresty field which you got the second yeah. time and then there's also at the basically the exit of the area, oh the, wow, the southern exit, I guess you would call it the bottom. Mm, okay, um, which has the sign. Okay, which we I guess you may have mentioned earlier, and then yeah. we can also end up via snowboarding um, at just area just to the right of that action, which is like a, a kind of a stony pass, which also leads to that that sign. Right, right, yeah. not far. Mm. So yeah, so there are like a couple different ways we can kind of go about this, um, but and, and several of the areas kind of have like their own little. <laughs> like kitschy thing to them, you know what I mean? It's like, yes. oh, this screen is the this screen. They are very uh, distinct, but you're yeah. So there, there are different forests, uh, forested sections, some bridge sections, some stony passes. But what's interesting, yeah, like, is that they are very iconic, which they yeah. they have land markers that um, correspond to the map that we're looking at, right. which is hand drawn, right? So you yeah. can see like, oh, here's the the one tree. And our here is like the the log bridge, or here is the yeah. weird like uh, icy ruins, or something like that. Right. Caves. Yeah. And when and, you and, first look at it, it, when you first look at it, like you might not really be able to make sense of it. But I actually found it to be like way more helpful than I remember this map being because, um, like, yeah. if you're at a certain spot where, like, like Alex was saying, the the kind of one that I used, like, I landed by the single tree. Um, and like right there on, on the map, you can see one tree. So I was like, oh, okay. And I had three directions that I could go in and I was like, okay, the one to the left is obviously the path that goes kind of like Northwest. The one down probably goes on the path that goes South and then the right goes towards the East and I could kind of get my bearings there. And it actually reminded me a lot of, uh, have you guys played the, um, Friday the 13th game for NES? I have not. I know the one you're talking about, but I haven't played it. Because it has a very similar map to this, where you don't see your... You, I think you see yourself on the map, but you kind of just go left to right, and it's like okay. a little more like dimensional than that. So like you kind of just have to make your bearings by being like, oh, okay, here's one of the big cabins versus one of the small ones, and here's where my character is. But gotcha. like it doesn't show you in real time where you are. It's just like when you get to the next screen, you're like... So you got to actually gotcha. kind of like think about it in that way and it, it, it's kind of the same thing with this yeah it's pretty cool i do i do like this uh that this aspect of this area yeah like when i was actually doing it like i i often find this area to be kind of annoying to do because it's like a little bit difficult uh and there's also getting... some backtracking that you have to do which is even more difficult yeah. because you kind of have like the step counter that's like preventing you from making progress and there's random encounters that can be pretty difficult so right so like, and that's the thing is that like it it's a bit annoying to go through, but at the same time, like I was thinking about it while I was playing it, and I was like, would I call this a bad area? And I thought about it, and I was like, no, it's actually a really well designed area. I feel like, yeah. like there, there's I, some really cool designs, um, yeah, from screens that you barely see. Um, I mean, like I'm looking at actually like the site where they actually has like all the the, well, the map screens, and, and like they're all kind of gorgeous, and, but, but they're they all, are, but um, but not even like the the. Um, the visuals of it, but just like, is this fun as a video game thing? Because, like I said, I kind of get annoyed going through it, but at the same time, there are random encounters through here too. There are, which right. can yeah. be frustrating if you're just trying to like get like yeah. spin, you keep well, keep being spun around, but you're keeping attack. Yeah, just trying to think about keep your mind on one thing. Well, that goddamn about it, snow I was like, keeps appearing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought that like what I actually ended up liking about it, though, even though I was thinking that, is that I feel like it's introducing a type of challenge that we haven't seen yet. Where we have this limitation on our amount of steps, we have like this um, fact that we don't really know where we're going, and that everything's very confusing. So it, it kind of is annoying to traverse and kind of you know kind of be like a frustration. But 
this is really the only area like that, and I think it actually adds like a gameplay challenge to it that we haven't yeah. seen. Yeah, and I think it's thematically fitting as well. Yeah, this thing about this game, like Final Fantasy VII mm. as a whole, is that like every area that we've gone to kind of does have a very different approach to how you navigate it, right. which is, I yeah. think is really cool. And I think it Keep kind it of helps it helps with uh, immersion as well, like thematically, because we're in this like cold, barren place that like might be hard to navigate to. And it's not just like, oh, I just have to go from point A to point B. Like it's getting lost kind of makes sense in this setting. Right. Um, so I'll tell you what, let's go through the different areas that we can actually get to in the glacier. And I want to start sure. with the bottom right one, because that's the first one I went to like a fool. Like a fool I went to it, I say. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to the very bottom right, there's a little cave that you can go in. And, like, it's really pretty. Like, there's, like, it's kind of, like, crystalline. Or I guess it's ice. But it, it's it's very pretty. And you can kind of, like, climb up on these little ice shelves. And you walk across to another screen. And there's, like, this big, twisty, like, spirally ice path, right? Uh -huh. And if you walk up to it, Cloud, is, Cloud says he's, like... Oh man, this looks like uh, quite a bit. Like, should we deal with this? And your options are like, all we're, right, time to get out of here. We're out of here. <laughs> yeah, we're out of here. Or like, I don't think so. And I was like, well, I'm I'm here. I'm in it to win it, baby. We're out of here. So I click the button, and he like jumps on it, and it's like a big slide. He just like woo, and it, like <laughs> goes all around and upside down. And he like loop runs down it, and then he's yeah, doing, at first like, he's running a similar roll that like Elena was doing, where he's like just yeah. like, somersaulting a little bit. Yeah. And if you do that, you get kicked out of the whole fucking area and you're back toward the icicle inn. Yep. Oh. That's what happened to me. And I was like, God damn it. Which I could have just turned right around and entered again in a different area. But I was like, well, I'll go to icicle inn and I'll buy some items and stuff. And, it, you know, thinking that I could just leave again and walk right back down. But you can't. <laughs> So. I think so. I did the same thing kind of early on, but I ended up just like continuing through uh, from like where the sign area is from the okay. ice gate sign. Do you want to talk about that one? Uh, yeah. So I think it's it's kind of just um, it, it, it corresponds to like on the map that I'm looking at, like area one. And there's like three ways you can go, like, you know, north, uh, east or west. And I forget which way I went, but I kind of just like was navigating around and then made my way to, I think, one of the areas that you can actually land in, like, the forested area. Yeah. Where there's a mine source that you can collect. <gasps> I did not even see it. Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of the items are kind of hard um, to see in this area. But another thing of note that I found in here was another one of those weird green pixels. <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I'll uh, I'll send you my um my mind source uh, like received mind source screenshot because there's definitely just a green pixel that's there that I was like oh cool a materia I guess or like another item bag <laughs> nope it's just a pixel so I mean I guess in the sleeping forest that pink pixel I saw was that summon materia for some reason they just left a pixel there instead of like just <laughs> a sprite it's so weird could be yeah so it's whack uh, I do have the text that's on the sign because you can't actually like really read the sign in the game. You can see a couple right. of the words, but yeah. just like Genova's helmet, you know, like uh, you kind of can't tell. So you have to look at like and when this came out, you're probably watching uh, watching it on a like crummy CRT. CRT. Yeah, yeah, it's all mushed together. <laughs> so it says Ice Gate, class of 1996, <laughs> <laughs> which like again the year before the game came out. Hell yeah. Uh, and then it says, in lowercase, top of the, and all uppercase, mountain. Yeah. <laughs> which I really like. Uh, elevation, 717 feet, 62 degrees north by 12 degrees west. Oh, weird. I want to... I wonder what that is in uh, longitude, latitude, or whatever. Oh, on, wait. A, on Earth? <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it that m could be correct in uh, in Gaia. What, what was the uh, longitude, latitude thing you said? Okay, so it's 62.05 degrees north. 62.05? Yep. And then west, 12.25. 12.25 west. Yeah. Hold on. We're going to figure this out live. Do it live. It's in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> we did oh, wait, it. On. Which ocean? Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to say the Indian no, Ocean. No, yeah, you're right. I looked it up on a. Uh, it's on near, Google it's Maps. somewhere between Iceland and the Faroe Islands. Yep. I mean, it is very north. What is Weird. It? Let me sh show me on the satellite map. Is there anything cool there? It's a lot of blue pixels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the developers of Google Maps also left some blue pixels there. <laughs> 
All right, well, it's a bunch of ocean. I was hoping someone would leave like a, a marker here. Oh, we could. I was like, we could do that. Kind of <laughs> FF7 brought me here. Just, Listen to every yeah, FNF. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, like, you know how you can like leave a picture on Google Maps or whatever? We just upload the screenshot of the sign at the beginning of the glacier fields. <laughs> With just a little stinger for uh, listening to the podcast. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna add this to my want to go bookmarks. <laughs> <laughs> It's out there. Uh, okay, so, um, so let's see. The first area I, or I'm sorry, the next area I went to was the very center one, right? Mm -hmm. So there's like a boiling spring right in the center, yeah. With um, uh, like a little, a small island in the middle of this little boiling lake, right? Boiling lake. What it's like a hot it? spring. Like a hot spring. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's steam coming off of it, but uh. Yeah, there's a little island in the middle, and the only way to get across is to play this, like, ice-shifting minigame. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so it's like a five-by-five five grid of tiny little um, small glaciers. What would, Is that what you would call it? An ice float, maybe? Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, like, some of them are sized so that Cloud can stand on them, and some of them are too small to stand on, right? Or right. even slightly submerged. And so whenever you step on one... The ones directly uh, beside the one that you're jumping on will either surface or sink, depending on what state they were in. So, for instance, if I'm jumping onto one from the south of it, right, like from the bottom of it, the one to its left, its top, and its right will shift whichever position they were in. So, if it was yeah. merged, it'll become it'll floating. Float. Yeah, oh, exactly. interesting. Um, so you're playing like a little mini game, right? Because you can put yourself into a corner where you have nowhere else to jump. And if that happens, the one you're standing on will sink and Cloud's like, oh no! <laughs> oh, and you, really? Yeah, and you wake up on the side of the, uh, the little, um, the, uh, the little lake or whatever. And he'll be like, okay, we need to be careful next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so it's, it's like a little puzzle. It, this it, whole it, area kind of gives, I don't know if you've all played the logical journey of the Zumbinis. Uh, no, no but that sounds amazing. It, it was a, it was a, like um, an educational game by Broadabun Software that was like I played on like my old Mac, that was like <laughs> the first color Mac. <laughs> oh, nice! That sounds fun. Uh, it, it, it reminded me of um, Sinkers and Floaters from Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. I don't know if you guys watched that show. <laughs> I that show was great. It was it what reminded... Take Takeshi's Castle in Japan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It reminded me of one of the mini game puzzles at the end of Super Mario RPG. <laughs> Oh, you hell have to jump yeah. on the buttons and make them all go down. Anyway, so if we get onto the little island in the middle of this lake, there's a little cave, and you can go into it and find the safety bit. Hell yeah. Uh, which... I also like when you get into this cave, uh, which is if you open the menu and it's just like the title card is just cave. But like, really? the way you get in there is cloud is like just just big enough to crawl through. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, the, yeah. the entrance is really tiny. But which yeah. is it's it actually is kind of interesting, right? Because like this cave is furnished. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like, mean there's some pots. I think there's yeah. a skull there as an well. Urn. An urn. An urn. There's an urn. There might be a skull there, or it might just be that the textures in the background are it a little It does look like a skull. Oh next, I, next yeah, I see it. There's an open chest. I I have zoomed in on it on my switch. That is a fucking skull. Hell yeah. Skelly bones. Uh, Always bring your skull uh, with uh, you when you're camping. That's right. <laughs> Glenn Danzig <laughs> sure lived did. here. <laughs> Very cozy. Um, yeah, so I mean it does look like people have tried to master the the glacier and the cliffs before, right? And perished. And perished. <laughs> um let's see here. Oh, you know what? Uh, so we haven't talked about any of the enemies here. Yeah. And I it's just, it's just the next uh image on my switch. <laughs> Did you guys see the ice golem? Yes, I love the ice golem. I love so much. the ice golem. It's so I wanted good. to use mini. I wanted to use mini on the ice golem, <laughs> but it doesn't work. I know. The, the oh, ice it golem, doesn't. Oh. No, the ice golem is just a very small little guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like what what model is it? We've seen this model before, haven't we? I think so. Um, like oh yeah, like it looks like a Shinra robot, but like if it was a foot tall. Yeah, we saw some of these uh, stone of the version of these guys around Cosmo Canyon, I think. Okay, yeah, but right. I think they were uh, bigger there. Like these ones are just probably. very small for some reason. Yeah, they're little baby sized ones. <laughs> yeah, because or else they would sink through the ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. But they're so also whole time, pretty tough. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they take a lot of damage. A lot of the stuff here is kind of tough, honestly. Yeah, I mean, if you um, use fire, it's all pretty easy. But like these ice golems, yeah. I think I used beta on like a group of them and like didn't kill them in one shot because they have like four thousand HP. Yeah, 
I uh I had the water ring on cloud this whole time, and so he's just been absorbing every attack though. So oh hell nice. yeah! So I, was, I I was just fine. I had something similar where I had um the elemental like absorb materia thing uh, with ice. So like anytime anything attacked cloud, I was just fine. Yeah yeah fair enough. Uh, uh, another enemy I came across with was the magnate. He's oh like, yeah fuck he, that one. He looks like a centaur, but he has two shields. Oh, yeah, and yeah he throws that them guy's at you. fucking crazy. Yeah, he fucking goes Captain America and just throws his fucking shield. And at you, you can't hit them unless you cast magic on them. Oh, well. I yeah, think I think I did hit them. Oh, is there? Okay. Yeah, it's just very, very low. Because I think the first time I did it, like I hit him and I was like, "Oh, these guys are cool, no problem." And then like every other time, I was just missing. Oh. I was like, "What the fuck I, am I doing?" I wrong? cast. I used a uh, Yuffie's blood fest on one. You know, it hits like fucking six times or whatever, and she missed yeah. every time. Holy well, I had, shit. Uh, well, I had Cloud in his eight counterattacks, and it hit once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, which was enough. He, he, Speaking of which, re- I actually have another picture on my Switch. I learned Sid's Dynamite here, oh, which nice. is such a cool fucking limit break. Because, like, as soon as you, like, uh, as soon as you pop the limit break, he uh, he pulls out, like, a stick of dynamite, like, six dynamite, like, wrapped together. Somebody stop Into him. one fuse. Yeah. And he just puts the fuse <laughs> up to his cigarette and lights the fucking dynamite with oh, his cigarette. that's so cool. And then he throws it, and it hits all the enemies. And I was like, that's so fucking badass. Classic Sid. <laughs> nice. Classic fucking Sid. Um, other enemies is Snow, which is, like, that beckoning woman again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she's an ice witch, basically. Yeah. Um, and the Bandersnatch. Yeah, the Bandersnatch has a cool name. <laughs> Bandersnatch from the hit. Black Mirror episode. That's right. <laughs> By Netflix. Um, let's see here. I oh, was... there's the shred. I was going to oh, say the yeah. shred. I meant shred to, I meant to... shred B. Yeah, I meant to preface that by saying, you know, a couple mm. episodes ago we had an enemy that slaps. In this slaps? episode, we have that's, one that's that exactly fucking That's exactly what I was shreds. thinking, too. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, man, if only we could get into a fight with the shred and the slaps. Hell, yeah. <laughs> There's also so the uh, the frozen yeah. nail, which kind of looks like a cross between like a praying mantis and like a house centipede sort of thing, and it yeah. uses a move Ew. called continue claw, <laughs> where it just keeps yeah, it, like attacking yeah. you over and over. We also saw the uh, another color of them in the Temple of the Ancients, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where I think I said they look like a, I said they look like oh like a little water bug, and you were like that's not what that is, that's a centipede or something like that, and I was like whatever, Alex, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know my <laughs> bug types. And then there's the Lesselopal. No, wait, Lesseloploth. Is that the uh, flying drake? It's a little f- drake. Yo, that drake has a fucking epic attack called Avalanche. You call I was going to say, yeah, it's got, it's got, it's joining Avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time it text. uses Avalanche, Barrett's just like, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool attack, though. It hits all your party members. I mean, it's cool in the way that, like, neat. it's neat to look at. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it hits all your party members for a significant amount of damage. Yeah, so. I think you can or, steal a phoenix down from it, apparently. I'm looking at my screenshots, oh. and I think I stole okay. a phoenix down from it. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Um, I bumped into a dude in a cave around here, mm. too. I'm um, not sure which cave that was. Is it the one that talks about the um, the spring? No, it's just a guy that says, leave me alone. Leave me be. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, that's the same one. Yeah, oh, yeah, is it? Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. So, <clears throat> so there's a screen uh, on the far right of the glacier field that has like a mountain that you can walk up and on very top is a hot spring and there's one area and it, it's not really obvious where it is like i kind of had to play around to get there but cloud can actually walk down to the spring and if you uh interact with it he'll put his hand in it or he'll say like oh i could touch it and you can you know confirm touch it interesting and if yeah. you go back to that person in that cave and you talk to them, they'll say... Their hey, dialogue changes. Yeah, they say, how dare you touch me with that filthy spring hand or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe you. The same hand that you touch that filthy spring with, yeah. Yeah, and then they get into a fight with you. And the the actual text is, you, you got a lot of nerve trying to touch me with the same dirty hands that touch that filthy hot spring. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> and, it starts and, It starts a boss battle with just... It another- starts the boss battle music. The da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da, like music. But it's just a fucking snow. No, it's yeah, like no, nothing oh. different, just the same enemy that we've already like killed a bunch of. I know it, it's the weirdest thing. That's so weird. But I was just like, uh, I'm done with this, so I just cast Bahamut <laughs> and I had yeah. Bahamut come down and just wreck shit. You Bahamuted right out. Yep. Yeah, but, and then after the the battle, uh, uh, the NPC says, "Why this?" and then like falls to its knees and dies and disappears and turns into a red materia. 
Yeah, and you receive the Alexander materia. Yeah. It's a me. Which I didn't use. Did you use it? I did not use I it yet, it. no. Okay, well, I'll use it next time and we'll find out what it, what it oh, looks yeah, like. <laughs> I was like yeah, this was actually like the last thing that I did um, because like I got to the part where um, that we're going to talk to at like the very end of this episode and then I yeah. realized that I still had a lot of stuff that I needed to get um, because I think the yeah. only other noteworthy thing that we really need to talk about um, in terms of items that you can get, there's a cave the that has an elixir. Um, yeah, let's talk about the elixir. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all right. Um, so did you notice, did you do anything special with this elixir? No. <gasps> did you know that you can do something special with this elixir? I did not. All right, check this out. This is the only item in the game that's this way. It's the, it's the only one. But Every time throughout the game that you pick up an item, a box pops up, like a text box that says, you got, and then the uh, name of the item, right? Yeah. This is the only item in the game that it doesn't disable your movement when the box pops up. What the fuck? So it'll say, you got elixir, and you can still run around. And the thing is, you can just leave the cave and come back, and the item is still there. What? But you already collected it. Oh. So I grabbed like 30 elixirs off this no thing. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just kept that, leaving. I thought the only way that you could get uh, unlimited elixirs was by... Um, by using the glitch with the W item that we have. The haven't W talked item about glitch? Yet, but yeah. yeah, like that's usually no, how I form up a uh, bunch of elixirs, but holy shit, I might reload my save and just so take a bunch of them. Not only that, did you know you can duplicate every item in the glacier? No. What? Yes. Okay. The, it, the other ones are not as. Like the amount of work you have to go through to actually get it to happen is way too fucking much. The elixir one's easy because you can just leave the screen, come back and grab it. But uh, like we were saying, the game calculates when you're going to pass out right? Uh, according to steps. And you can grab something while you're running. So if you grab something while Cloud is walking onto his last step, he'll pass out, but you'll have grabbed the item. But Whoa. it'll still be there because the clearing, the, like the, the code to clear it from the screen never came up. So you can just grab like 99 Alexander materials or whatever you want. Holy you, shit. Yeah, I you just no have to idea. grab it on the last step. Oh, yeah. That's so and, awesome. And online, there are strategies of like, okay, well, if you just make sure to walk against the wall or whatever in this fashion, you'll always be right at the step count you want. Holy shit. Or whatever item it is. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. That's really awesome. Yeah. And uh, I mean, another item that you could probably do that for, which I guess you don't really need to, is the all materia. Yeah, there's an all materia. So actually, in, let's it, talk about the area that the all materia is in. Sure. So oh, yeah. once you go all the way north in the glacier, and or- The you northmost know, screen on this map. Yeah. And, and like I said- you, you will have passed out by this point and kind of skipped this area. Like, you're not going to get to it from the way that we're talking about. Right. But <clears throat> if you do go all the way north, you'll emerge onto, like, a giant snow field. And, like, it's... I got there no problem, strangely enough. Oh, really? You went all the way north? Yep, without passing out. Oh, okay. Oh, well. I got, like, a God gamer over here. Like, uh, yeah, God gamer. I guess I just <laughs> took the exact right amount of, like, journeys from the, the trees. Okay. The, the Game's the tree easy. Screen, to, to the tree, to tree screen try. to the bridge screen <laughs> to, like, an overpass screen <laughs> right to the... There's a multiple ways of getting there. Okay. Well, um... If you're not yes, a God gamer to... like Alex, then you'll probably have passed <laughs> out by now, but... Yeah. I am a summon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alexander, yeah. Alex um, is planning on d delivering a, a blow to the planet that creates such a large wound that he will become a God gamer. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so you'll emerge onto the snow field, right? And, like, it's using the overworld assets. Yeah. Like, right. you're, like, your overworld model, like, when you're actually walking around the world map. And it's just, there are no, um, what would you call it? There are no landmarks. No landmarks. There's nothing to look at. This, the camera's over top of you, and it is just white in every direction, right? You yeah, can and you can't see... move the camera at all. Like, yeah. it's, it's like the world map, except you can't control which direction yeah. the camera is facing. And, and there's a blizzard going on at the same time, so visibility is low anyway. And every so many steps you take, the camera flips and goes and like aims a different direction. It kind of drifts off, like kind of yeah. orbit, orbiting you. But yeah. if, I mean, there pro so the whole point of the screen is that you have to place these markers to kind of keep yourself anchored and oriented. Yeah, so you, this is the... Kind of like that scene in uh, Hateful Eight where they're just planting down, like, a mm. tether into the bathroom okay. <laughs> so they can make their way back to the, and forth <laughs> of the bathroom and through a blizzard. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, you're just placing these stakes so you can kind of, like, markers throughout the map. So when the camera spins around, you can you can see the markers move because you know exactly right. where it just came from. Yeah. Right. Because there's, like, a, there's a blizzardy texture going over the map, now, too. Now, I will say the... 
the texture of the ground uh-huh. I was gonna bring this is up literally well. lined up in a fucking grid. Yep. So <laughs> so even if you didn't place the markers, you could just follow the grid. If you look well, closely, you, you can see CRT where monitor. two of the tiles yeah. like connect with each other. So there's like literally just like l- straight lines going through. And then when the camera changes, those remain, you know, static. So you can just be like, oh, okay, well, I was going what I think is north. And now if I go to the right, I'll continue in that north direction. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so on the screen, there are like uh, four exits to the screen. That's, but but yeah. in the middle there is a just a cave, yeah, a, a, just like almost a plateau or just a giant boulder with a cave in it. Right, which is where we get that all material. Yeah, and it's funny when I first came up to this, just because of the nature of the camera mm-hmm. moving the way it was, um, I was just like, oh, I guess this is just a landmark for you to like get your bearings even further. Like, I guess this is the exact center. And I just kept walking, and then it wasn't until like a couple of revisits to this location where I was like, oh wait, no, there's actually an entrance here. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, so. I'm actually looking at the guide now, but you, yeah, if the, you can, there are four points of which you can approach this, yeah. or I guess to say three points where you approach it, but four points you can exit it because yeah. if you go north, you'll leave the area. Right, yeah. Right. So, like, there's we were saying, one other thing I think that we should talk about, though, another uh, okay. item here that's very hard to find. Sure. So while you're going through all of these different screens, like the different, uh, like the fourteen different areas or whatever, um, every now and then you'll reach like transitional screens i guess where it's just like the same screen over and over again you're going left to right or up and down and um, it's just a snowy corridor right exactly yeah essentially and um a path or yeah it's very confusing yeah exactly and that's just kind of you know racks up your step counter even though there's only 14 areas and then these static ones but in one of them when you keep uh climbing up it's like a screen that you go like down to up a bunch of times on the third screen which all of the screens are identical Next to a cliff is a, a very light blue materia that's added cut. What? Oh. Yeah. So I it's like, say, I'm going back for that because that is yeah. a great materia. Yeah. So what added cut does is it uh, adds a an attack to the end of whatever materia is paired with it. So you could pair it with mm. like fire mm. two. And then when you cast fire two, you use that and then you also attack. You can also <laughs> pair it with cure. And when you cure one of your people, you'll then attack them. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so I tried to pair it with counter. And then um, when when I did the counterattack, I didn't do two. So it wasn't like okay. Alex's mime thing. I was, yeah. I was wondering if I could do that, the same thing with this. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Yeah, I got you. Just keep adding cuts, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, it's, it's hard to find, particularly just because the materia itself, like the sprite for the materia, blends in really well with the, the snowy area around it. So this is a very easy to miss item. Yeah, I totally missed it. I... I'm sure I went up that path too. Yeah, yeah I, I walked past it the first time, and then I was like, "Wait, I know this materia is here." And I like went back to check the guide, and I was like, "Oh, those fuckers! Like, that's really that's a really good material <laughs> to just hide that way." What that is really good. Yeah, huh. especially Whatever. because like in those transitional screens, like they're not the ones that you're really thinking about. Like they're not the specific ones in here that you're like trying right. to focus on. You're like, yeah. "Oh, there's nothing here," and it's like two in a row are completely empty in the same screen, and then you get to this one, and it's like you really got to pay attention. Interesting. Um, yeah. So is there like an end goal to this location or are we just basically just kind of, it's supposed to kind of send us in a spin until we pass out? Uh, there is an end goal. You can actually walk all the way across the ice field and you'll end up the same place you would end up if you passed out. So, Oh, north exactly. on the ice field? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So at some point, if you're not an absolute god gamer, <laughs> then <laughs> you'll have passed out from your step count, right? I'll have to try yeah. that out next time. Yeah. And when you wake up, uh, you'll be in a cabin, right? And like Cloud like wakes up on the floor of this cabin, and there's a he's kind of in like a little like it looks like a little barn room or something. I'm not really sure how to describe it. There's like a little loft uh, up a set of stairs, and he's below that loft, kind of just napping on what looks like a canvas or something like that. Yeah, like a sheep's skin or something. Right. And there's somebody up top in the loft, right? And they walk down and meet us, and our our party members are standing there, and he says. You collapsed at the Great Glacier. It's a miracle that you're alive. My name is Holtzoff. I've been living here for 20 years now. <laughs> Which, remember that old lady by the fire was like, my husband's been gone for 20 years. <laughs> yep, in the house that we took the map. <laughs> and, uh, and, like, we, we don't say a thing about her to him. We're not, yeah. we're not like, you know, your wife is like... <laughs> <laughs> she's she so you, comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's really cozy by the, uh, the furnace there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at the script, um, and in, um, if you somehow make it to the screen on your own... Um, you can uh, walk into Holtsoff's, uh cabin. Yeah. And he says, now this is a surprise. 
How many years has it been since I saw anyone here? Oh, excuse me, my name is Oltoff. I've lived here for 20 years now. You mind listening to stories of a lonely climber? Why don't we go to the next room and sit down? And then it continues for I think we're off. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Which is cool. You're like, oh, yeah. hey. <laughs> All right. Cool. What a surprise. That like, is cool. So he asks us, he says, have you ever heard about those who challenge the cliff? And you can say yeah or no. And I said Stupid no. Stupid fucking cliff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm glad you said no because I said yeah. And he just like continued talking. And I was like, shit, I meant to say no. <laughs> what is the next line? There's an old legend. No, it's uh, the first time my friend Yamsky and I tried to climb the cliff okay, 30 right. years ago. So yeah. let me give you a, the, there's a couple lines if you say no. Uh, yeah, it yeah. says, there's an old legend that says something fell from the sky here a long time ago. Oh, it's, supposed, it's supposed to have pushed the land up and formed this cliff. So yeah, like we know what the, the thing that fell from the skies is now, all right? But, um, and then he begins his story. 20 years ago, Yamsky and I braved this cliff to see what was on the other side. But we weren't prepared for it. We never dreamed the temperature would be so low. That cliff has a biting cold that lowers your body temperature. Yamsky was below me, and he cut his own rope. Dot dot dot. And he's like, he when he says this, he turns around and kind of puts his hand on his face, yeah. like he's like grieving. And he says, "I didn't even notice." Um, and turns back around to you and says, "I've lived here ever since, challenging the cliff and providing warning and shelter to my fellow climbers. If you're going to climb, you need to take two precautions." First, check your route. It's hard to find because of all the snow. And um, a little, like, dialogue box pops up in the bottom, or, like, a little instructional box that says, press A to confirm route and Y to repeatedly raise your body temperature. And he says, second, warm yourselves up once you get to a ledge. So pressing Y to raise your body temperature. And then he asks you if you understand, and you can say, one more time, or yes. Yeah. One more. Yeah, one more. Yeah. <laughs> he says, you must be tired coming all the way here. Better get some rest before you head out. And then you have a little in thing. You know. Yeah. And uh and then we are outside Holtzoff's cabin. And everyone's all the, here. And everyone's here. All the everyone, party members are standing. Everyone who's still alive. Everyone's <laughs> shivering. <laughs> you <laughs> oh, bastard. God damn it. Um, <laughs> oh, one one quick uh side note about that is before you go into that room to talk to uh Holzoff, um, I had uh, Tifa and Barrett in my party, and Barrett's foot is just clipping through the geometry <laughs> of like the uh, <laughs> of the thing because he's like his model is so big, so his boot looks like it's just like going through the wall. <laughs> is Holes off a real name, by the way? You said Holes off, and it does sound like a a, a punchline to a joke. Uh, it sounds like uh, a German name to me. Like I would imagine, like, and the the Z's in German names is kind of like a TZ name. So I was imagining it was like Holtzoff. Oh, Holtzoff. Yeah. I was thinking like, you'll freeze your holes off. and his friend. <laughs> <laughs> you'll freeze your holes off. <laughs> Holtzoff uh. and his friend, Noam Yamsky. <laughs> <laughs> Noam Yamsky. <laughs> God damn it. That's so good. Oh, you just remind me of my uh, Chain Chomsky. <laughs> Chain Chomsky. <laughs> Chain Chomsky. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Anyway, yeah. so everyone's yeah. out here, which again, like, I, it, it breaks my brain. Like, all oh, right, we're traveling with everyone, I guess. Yeah, yeah. technically everybody's so here. So we have like, uh, we should have all just huddled together for one. Well, I think that like, I think that you're not traveling with everybody. You're rendezvousing with them. You're rendezvousing. I yeah. believe that's why yeah, we that have the sense. PHS to call them. Calling um, up by my cell phone. And I, I just a random factoid I ran I read on the fandom wiki is that everybody is shivering with the exception of Red and Kate Sith. Yeah, and like they're just like <laughs> ready to go. Total hard ass. I totally noticed Or that. like, you know, a a model that He's pays, comfortable that back at nothing. Shinra and in, in, in <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? He's like, yeah. yeah. He's a he has like toy. a scarf on, he's like drinking hot chocolate with marshmallows in it, and he's like, Oh, this is rough. <laughs> he's got one of you guys right now. Yeah. He's sitting at his desk and under his desk he has one of those little feet warmer things that you have at like companies. <laughs> What's that uh Japanese uh uh heated oh, blanket I, table? A kotatsu. kotatsu. Yeah, kotatsu. Yeah. He, he's under a little kotatsu. <laughs> he has his laptop up and some headphones on. He basically looks like us podcasting. And he's just like, Man, sure looks cold. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Suck, sucks to suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the reason that uh, Nanaki wouldn't be cold is just he's got, you know, the fur and stuff. Like, he's built for this, I feel uh, like. He's got a little fire he has, tail. He has a fiery burning passion is why. Hell <gasps> yeah, he's got the tingles. Oh, he's got the tingles. Hotter oh, than uh, any, <laughs> hotter than the sun. Uh, I, I do like, Those, uh, Nanaki I do like uh, Sid's uh, shiver animation. It's very goofy. He's got like his, his legs like bowed <laughs> and he's like crouching down and like just trying with all his might to stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, so and then like as soon as uh, Barrett and uh, Tifa come out or whoever's in your party, like they instantly just start shivering. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, poor Tifa and uh, Yuffie. Oh were, man, Tifa and Yuffie. No pants. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And fight, oh man, they Just jorts. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> they both got the midriff thing going too, right? So yeah. like, oh boy, freezing, yep. freezing. And I mean, even like Cloud's even, doing fine. I was gonna say even Cloud's model, he has like a sleeveless like thing going on, so his like arms are completely exposed. And I'm just like, oh god, they're yeah. freezing he, to death. <laughs> he's like that one president who uh, during his like inauguration or whatever. Was, oh was, like, yeah, January, was that like, uh, William Henry Harrison? Got, I think so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He pneumonia. died in 30 days because he died got in 30 pneumonia. days because <laughs> <laughs> he, he got pneumonia from not wearing a shirt during his uh, <laughs> like, inauguration because he wanted yeah. to look tough for America and then fucking yep. instantly got owned. <laughs> got owned. <laughs> I that's such a god. That's like what a stupid fucking country. It's very dark, in. but I feel like you've ruined every like future funeral for me, which is a very dark thing. But like now in my head, I'm gonna be sitting there and being like. Fucking got owned. <laughs> oh no! Off. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't don't apply that to last week's episode, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, Eris beats it. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Eris got oh, no. wrecked. <laughs> oh no! I made myself sad. <laughs> This is what, what, what is Does anyone post the Eris death scene as a fail vid? Oh, oh no. my god! Epic fails. Yeah, epic fails. <laughs> fail compilation. No. Yeah. Uh, Anywho, we're out here shiving yeah. our britches uh, off and out front of Holtsoft's. I love hole. what Barrett said, or not what Barrett says, but what you can say to Barrett. He says, "You know, I've been thinking," and you can either say, "What is it?" or save it for later. <laughs> and I like that, like we're all like out here, and he's like, "We're about to do something huge," and like Ares recently died and everything, and he's just like, "You know, guys." I've been thinking. You'd be like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, you just <laughs> don't make do fun that. Of him. <laughs> yeah, You're like, I feel don't. fine now after snowboarding and having fun. <laughs> that is like the theme of this game. Every time something sad happens, we're like, oh, game time. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Fun times. And then going you can, all, like, yeah, it was first it was Gold Saucer right after all the shit with Dine. It was like, yeah, let's go and play. And yeah. now we can also go back to the Gold <laughs> Saucer and do the uh, snowboarding <laughs> mini game again. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I actually do like Barrett's text here. I think oh, it's yeah. actually very well written. Yeah. He says, see in a place like this, it makes you realize how awesome nature is. But if anyone ever tried to tell me to live here, I'd tell them to, you know. <laughs> I, t- I tell you one thing, though. Shove it. If I did have to live here, I'd change things around and make it better. Oh, yeah. I guess Midgar is the total opposite of this place. When you think about it that way, Shinra don't seem so bad. And then he like puts his hands in the air and he goes, Arg! What the hell am I saying? The Shinra not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love and that. The, yeah. It's such yeah. a weird moment too of him being like, maybe the Shinra's not so bad after all. Like that's very out yeah. of character. Which uh. I like that if you talk to him again after that, so that's like the end of his speech. If you talk to him again, he kind of says the same thing, but in a different oh. way that I think is even more interesting. Oh, yeah. Where he says, you know, standing here like this makes you feel like the planet's not with us, you know? And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, of course, we can't compete. I mean, the planet doesn't even notice us humans, which is fucking super. I love, I love that. I love Barrett being deep. It made oh, me yeah. think of The Revenant. Ugh. Just like man versus nature, man. Oh, the movie. <laughs> yeah. I was like. Not the Doom men- enemy. With the no, girl. I was thinking <laughs> the Distiller song. We are the Revenant. Whoa. No. <laughs> but just think about from the dead. All right, sorry. But yeah, like the, just, just the whole thing of just this impossible, unfathomable thing that is the nature, yeah, and the planet that does yeah. not even care about us. I mean, it's relevant to nowadays. Like, oh no, the planet will be fine. Like humans will perish, but yeah, the planet yeah. will keep evolving and moving on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just just thinking about it in terms of like climate catastrophe and shit, where it's like, right. oh yeah, like the uh the the planet doesn't even notice that us humans are here and stuff. I just have the the Qui Gon Jin moment of I wish that were so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's yeah. I feel, I feel like that's very poignant. Like not only in yeah. the game, but in in like real life today, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it, um, it's very humbling being out in nature and kind of being faced with like the fragility of like humanity you know where you're just like oh yeah like like just thinking about it sometimes i'm like oh yeah like if i didn't have like neosporin or something and i got an ingrown toenail like and I had to like hike or something like that could just be like oh i have to cut my foot off eventually like it's insane how like, yeah. nature can just completely destroy us at any minute yeah Oof. and i also feel like it, it kind of like it once again, in a in a weird way, kind of 
measures us up to like Sephiroth and Genova, right? Because like Genova is a thing that hit the Earth, and like the the planet has been trying to deal with it, right? Yeah. Like uh, if Fallen says like the planet's keeping an eye on this situation, it's trying to heal itself. A whole bunch of shits going on, but like Barrett said, it's like the planet's not with us though. Like we're not doing anything to it, so it doesn't even fucking care about us. Yeah. Like we're just ants moving along. And it doesn't matter. You know. What Cue I mean? that Dave Matthews band. No. <laughs> every time I think of Dave, like, <laughs> I don't know, every it's, just think acu- of, it's just acoustic disturbed. Every time I think of Dave Matthews Band, I always think of one song, Does Dave and Matthews then I go, love wait a minute, no, that's Blues Traveler, never mind. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah critical support to Blues Traveler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anti-critical support to Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> Critical um, damage to Dave. <laughs> 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 but yeah, you can talk to the other characters as well, and they have other things. And like Kate Sith, total fail again because he's like, "Hey, this is secret info, but Rufus is going to arrive here." And like, yeah, I know the Shinra guard at the fucking town told me you were yeah. there. <laughs> you know what? It's funny too because I read that and I was like, "Oh, you know what? He's actually, you know, making up for you know a, a little bit, little by little. Maybe he's actually trying to make up for the shit that he's done." Where he's like, "Hey, right." I would get killed if I told you this, maybe, but, like, you know, heads up, Rufus is going to arrive here, too. And it's like, yeah, dude, we already fucking knew that. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't we know if like... you were fucking here. Yeah. <laughs> He's been spying on us the whole time. You couldn't hear that? <laughs> like, yeah. that's what you risked your life to tell us is a yeah. thing that we already know? And then Kaseth mutes his, like, microphone and leans over to the guy and this is secret info, but cloud and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cloud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, he um, risked his uh, his second body. <laughs> yeah, this. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Red says, "I wonder what's at the top of that cliff. We shall see." Yeah, and Vincent says, "I wonder what's on the <laughs> other side of that cliff." Dot dot. dot. Yeah, I know they have very similar ones. <laughs> Vincent doesn't yeah. really have mm, his place in this story. Is very like on hold. It feels like yeah. Uh, he's obviously. until 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 we meet Hojo, probably. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there is a, a whole big thing with uh, more Vincent content that's just, like, specifically his story, which is very good. Yeah. But uh, um, Sid nice. has great dialogue here. I didn't get Sid or Yuffie, so they're in my party. Okay, yeah, so Sid says, damn, if I was back in the air, this cliff would be nothing. Like, he's always just thinking, like, god damn, I wish I was flying. Once that's a captain, awesome. always the captain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Yuffie just says, brr, I can't take this cold. It's like, yeah, yeah. I gotta put on a jacket. Uh, Tifa nice. says, I gotta keep telling myself that this blizzard is okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> She's just like trying to fake her way through it. She's like, I just gotta pretend that it's not there. It's all in the mind. <laughs> the yeah. Temperature's in the mind. So uh, I but, guess this is probably where we're going to mm, put a marker in for this week. Right? This is, yep. Yeah. And then we'll. We're gonna put down that marker. Then the, we'll get spun around and hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and going up that hill. Like we're going Bush. going up that hill. <laughs> Who is that that does that? Kate Bush. Kate, Kate Bush. Bush. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Kaseth. So the better kiss. <laughs> so, so it's gonna be a little bit weird. I'll just tell you this: the way we're gonna structure the podcast, because the next area coming up is the cliffside, and then we're also gonna do reunion. So the, the thing that we've been ooh. talking about for a long time, Sephiroth asking, "Are you going to the reunion?" and everybody, all the uh, the clones saying reunion over and over. It is time for us to go to reunion. I um, wonder how all my classmates have changed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, Johnny invented post-it notes, apparently. <laughs> I think that's the second time I made that shitty fucking joke on this <laughs> it show. It might God be. Damn it. Oh, yo, two All of right, the, Johnny. Two of the people in um, in uh, the inn in Icicle Inn have Johnny's model, and I was like, Johnny! Yeah. <laughs> and like, I don't think it's him, though, because they Johnny don't have Johnny was any. a race car Yeah, driver. it's not. <laughs> Johnny was a race car uh, Oh, speaking of race cars, mm. I did want to comment briefly on the uh, the weird like Mad Max uh like tractors. Oh yeah, the, the snow it, plows the, or whatever. Yeah, yeah they, they just look like normal like deer tractor. It, this is at Ice School Inn. Like at the bottom of the screen, you kind of miss them if you just hang around the. Yeah. Tr- but they they just look like normal like John Deere tractors, but they put like freaking like cow catchers and <laughs> armor on them. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I'm I'm from the rural areas, and they totally would do that. It's yeah. Like a thing where we're just yeah, like off roading, like just <laughs> off road snow. Like just doomsday. Do not become addicted to materia. You will resent its absence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, have you been to Wu Tai? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll do the we'll do the cliff. We'll do reunion, and this is why I said it was going to get a little bit weird. There's not a good save point in between the end of reunion and the Junon part two episode. So just pause your game and then wait <laughs> so a week. just pause your game and then wait a week. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> we're gonna finish it at the end of June. On there'll be so, there's a really good like. Is there any overworld part. moments to save? No. Oh, no. weird. There will be a really. There's a lot of great big ending, like a thing that'll feel like the end of an arc next time, and we'll end it right there, and then we'll just pick up at the beginning of the next arc, even though the player and us will have to like maybe play a little bit of the next section and say. Okay. But um, since there's no good save point between like the part of the episode, it's just like that disc change in uh Parasite Eve that you were talking yeah. about last week. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> these upcoming sh- sections are like almond joys because they got nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Chock full of nuts. <laughs> They're chunky peanut butter, baby. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Um. Oh, I forgot to start this episode. Let's no, well, back over. to the beginning. <laughs> well, yeah, let's start it over, guys. I'm sure my Skype connection will hold out uh, for another t- three <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, so you want to do some uh, housekeeping? Hell yeah. So we already went on over next week. Theme music is a remix by DJ Cutman. Uh, feature music by Nubo Metsu. Check the show notes for a link to the album on Spotify. Um, leave us a review on iTunes. It's always a pleasure. Let us know what you think anything smells like, honestly, at this point. Yeah. A chocobo, <laughs> inside or outside. Yeah. How do you cook your chocobo? Oh, no. What kind of bird do you think? Do you think it's kind of meaty, kind of lean? It's like Aww. an ostrich feel- burger. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like chocobos, to me, are like the one sacred thing in the Final Fantasy where I'm like, I'm like no, they are to be loved and respected. <laughs> some shade to some moogles there, Curtis. Yo, I would eat a moogle. It's like a Pokemon <laughs> anime where all the Pokemon are vegetarian. Yeah, right. What are the things called in Final Fantasy VIII? The not Moogles, the things? Moombas. Moombas, hell yeah. Because it always reminds me of Moombaton. <laughs> Moomba like, number the five. <laughs> <laughs> Laguna Vega. <laughs> I get that, but sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm so out of it. Yeah, no, I don't. No, wait, you, wouldn't, you won't get it until FF8 anyway. But <laughs> yeah, it's not I'll a good joke either it. way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We are every FNFNF on all the social medias. Well, not all of them right now, but we're on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. And uh, send us an email if you have any other thoughts. All the ones that matter. (laughs) Send us corrections, uh, either facts, uh, geography, music (laughs) corrections. Telegraph. Telegraph, spelling. Or you can send us some money for a cat surgery. Yes, this cat needs robot legs. (laughs) It's a risky operation, but we know it's going to pay off. Yeah. But yeah, I would like—I don't know—I would just like to say thank you again to everybody who donated. Oh, for, absolutely! Um, Hell yeah! Um, but, but yeah, if, um, if it's two hours have passed and you forgot that there's a cat that could use your help, we don't have a Patreon yet. But we, uh, we've been joking with each other that this is why we need a Patreon. We keep rescuing cats. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be so a like thing. instead of like paying for the show, we're just gonna be like, no, the show's fine. We need more. Cats. Yeah, the show's fine. We just need to rescue more cats. So I, if you want to, sh- if you want to keep the people on the on the show happy. Um, and want less bummer stories of mm-hmm. 400 cats, send a, send a few bucks. And if not, uh, share the link. It would help a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll probably share a, p- a picture on the actual Instagram and everything with all the information that you need for that. So keep a, keep a lookout for that. See you next week. I wanted to sing along, but my BP, my uh, my the latency. It's, there's no way I would be singing along <laughs> with you guys. They just throw it all off. It's really, really quiet here without Carl. Was in that the, same the end? Room. Did we do it? Was that the end, or do we need to keep going and do another ending? <laughs> no, I think that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck it. I guarantee we had worst endings to this show. <laughs> <laughs>